I want to call to order the meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission for April 8, 2024. We'll begin with our prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. We'll ask that each of you please stand at this time and our County Commissioner Trey Gooch will lead us in that prayer and pledge. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Oh Father, we love you and we praise your name for we know that all good comes from you. And Father, as we uh, meet here today uh, to conduct our business for the county, we just uh, express to you our appreciation that we live in a place, living in a country that we can do this, that the government is elected, and that uh, the community, the citizens participate, and we just praise you so much for that, Father. We also ask to be mindful of those people who are serving us overseas, that you will comfort them and guide them and uh, attend to their safety and their quick, speedy return home. And as always, Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, who came to this earth as a man, became in very nature a servant to us, a servant who was obedient to death, even death upon the cross, so that we may have life everlasting. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Madam Secretary, you may give us the roll call and determination of quorum. Jim Averwater. Here. Jeff Phillips. Present. Mike Cush. Present. Lee Bogle. Here. Charlotte P. Here. Trey Gooch. Here. David Jones. Here. Chip Pinion. Here. Marvin Whitworth. Jim Thompson. Here. Had us read. Here. We have a quorum. We do have a quorum. We'll now have the approval of our minutes from March 25 to, on for 2024. Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The minutes of the March 25th meeting are in good order. Therefore, I make a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Do I have a second? second. I have the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? They are approved. Public comment period. Mr. Mossy? No one signed up, sir. No one signed up for public comment period. We'll move now into items withdrawn or deferred. Uh, nothing, sir. We have no items withdrawn or deferred. Moving directly into our new business or item seven. These are items A, rezoning, uh, rezoning or zoning ordinance amendments request. Just a reminder that all rezoning and zoning ordinances amended request will be considered at the May 16, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting unless deferred or withdrawn by the Planning Commission or the applicant. Moving first into item number one. This is Elnez Norbod. REZ 23010, location is 5512 Chevelville Pike. Commissioner District is Jonathan Beverly. Size of site is approximately one acre. Tax map 158, parcel 30.12. Existing zoning is residential medium density RM. Proposed zoning is commercial services. Mr. DeMossi. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you and good evening, everyone. Uh, this application was originally brought before the Planning Commission back in July of last year. Uh, you may recall it was deferred at that time due to concerns raised uh, about the speculative nature of this request. As you stated, Mr. Chairman, they are asking for commercial services zoning on the tract of land. It's on the maps in your iPads as well as on the uh, map on the screen behind me so that you can see. Uh, the concept plan has been updated and submitted by the applicant. Again, as you know, since this is not a planned development, it's not binding, but they're showing a proposed building of about 4,500 square feet. Uh, the size and the layout of this property will be determined by lar in large part by the availability and the location of their septic area, as well as areas being reserved for both buffering and stormwater detention. According to the applicant, the plans for the building is for an administrative building for a local woodworker, carpenter, where they can meet clients, draw out plans, administrative work, et cetera. Uh, he does have two workshops, but that's not gonna be on the property. He's gonna have those in other areas, but he would like the ability to be able to sell samples and, and small pieces, personal pieces out of his office. So as far as access, of course, that'll be along Shelbyville Pike, 
Uh, of course, any new or improved access points do need to be approved by TDOT since that is a federal slash state road. Landscape buffer to be required to be a type two buffer along all sides zone for residential use. That would pretty much be to the north, to the west, and to the south looking at that property. Uh, there is an existing TVA line, TVA easement on there. When you look at the concept plan, you can see, however, that it doesn't really affect that property too much. It kind of looks like it does on this photo here, but you gotta remember this is kind of an oblique. It's skewed, so uh, it's not a, a straight up and down kind of shot. Uh, overall, uh, this is within the development node that was assigned to this area in the county's comprehensive plan, which is centered around what we would call downtown Christiana. So it is within that one mile of that. Uh, however, the closest non-residential zoning is located about 1,500 feet to the south of the property. Uh, you know, while staff doesn't necessarily think this will ever develop in a residential manner, uh, this would be the first commercially zoned piece of property in this area, except for that one to the south. So we just wanted to make that, uh, make you all aware of that. I'm not sure there's a lot of people here. I'm not sure if the applicant's present. I didn't see, yes, she's way in the back. I just saw her waving. So the applicant is present and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have on this. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any questions for the staff? Questions or comments? <laughs> If there are none, I'll ask that the applicant come forward at this time. Good evening. And just uh, give us name, address, and then they'll. Elnaz Norabadi, 696 Brewer Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37211. Commissioners, you have questions for the applicant? If not, I'll let, I'll let you go ahead and just explain what your plans are for this property. Yeah, I know last time I was here, it was still kind of up in the air what we were gonna do with the space, but I've met with our potential client a lot of times now, and he just wants, like Mr. DeMosi said, um, a physical brick and mortar location to be able to meet with his clients, do planning whatever it may be because right now his two workshops one is located it's attached to his house so it's not a very professional place for him to meet with his clients um, and he has another location um, for his actual workshop but it would be good to have a place a more professional place to meet with people and also um, he has personal and sample pieces that he works on that he would like to sell which is why I'm asking for commercial services rather than just professional services like for just administration Commissioners? I think you have satisfied them, so thank you. And uh, we'll get into the public hearing. Okay, thank you. We'll now uh, open it up for the public hearing period. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain the public hearing period to you that if you have comments you wish to make either for or against this development that we're going to be doing here you ask we ask you that you would come forward you'll have exactly three minutes to express your comments there is a timer that will be timing you you'll see it right here it's just like the traffic light it has a green yellow and red light when you get to a yellow light it's warning you you only have a few more seconds left the red light means you are through there is no trap door here, I'll warn you right up front, so we will not lose anybody, but we ask that you do quit at the red light. This is to keep us moving tonight. We ask you to, uh, by ethics, that you keep it very uh, to the point, and, and what you say is not against, what, against anyone or anybody, and uh, help us get through this. So we'll ask you to come one at a time up here for this particular uh, item on the agenda so anybody speaking for or against item number one come forward at this time commissioner commissioner jonathan beverly good evening sir good evening. thank you for having me and you'll have to forgive the head cold it's made its way around my house this entire past week and we're still making the recovery. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jonathan Beverly. I serve as the county commissioner for District 6, which includes Christiana and this plot of land right here. I'm here tonight on behalf of some constituents that were unable to make it and just wanted to pass along some of their concerns. Mainly, it's not this project they're worried about. 
It's once we zone this as commercial, what can be done with the parcel if they decide not to build or if it's sold or if this woodworking shop decides to close up in five or six years and it's now commercial, they're worried about a discount tobacco and beer store coming in. They're worried about a vape shop or other things that are directly or just adjacent to a neighborhood. That's some of the things that they're concerned about. So they presented some alternatives that they would like to maybe be considered, which would be a PUD that limits a scope of what this plot could be used for while allowing the applicant's proposed use, but reeling back what some of the commercial services uh, zoning does allow. So that's kind of what, what they're really hoping for is just some future look of what this property could be used for if the woodworking shop decides to ever close or if the uh, intention does change and let's say this lease isn't executed, they just want to have some protections there rather than just a large commercial zoning. So thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else? Good evening. We need your name and address, please. I am Julie Sandifer, 223 Richmond's Retreat Boulevard, Christiana, Tennessee, 37037. Please forgive me, I'm terribly nervous. This is the second time I've spoken in public. I live in the proposed neighborhood that is right behind this piece of property. And I spoke last time when we weren't sure of what was gonna happen with the project. I'm speaking for myself, not for my neighbors. I live in a house that backs up to the electrical wires and it's a very dark neighborhood. We have a lot of little children in our neighborhood. I'm not necessarily opposed to a person having a business if it's solely a personal business. I am a little worried about having a tobacco or an alcohol store right out front of our neighborhood where we can have kids that can easily walk to the neighborhood from the neighborhood out to get anything. We don't have a lot of lights. We don't have any traffic signals. We probably are not gonna have a traffic signal at our neighborhood. And there's not a lot of room. There's a little house in front. There's houses all in our neighborhood. It's a very small community. I just am worried that it might bring a little bit more undesirable traffic through our neighborhood. So please forgive me, i still a little bit opposed to the project. I'm not opposed to new buildings in our area or new businesses. I just don't know, like Mr. Beverly said, if anything happens with the lease, what is the intended use of the property down the line? And will our neighborhood change for any more I like our little neighborhood, it's quiet, I like our little area, so I would just like to say that I'm not opposed to anything that's personal, just if it changes, and I don't wanna have a lot of businesses in our area, it's all residential at the moment. Down the street is a Dollar General and a coffee shop with a little gas station. I just am very nervous about what this could bring to our neighborhood, so. Speaking for my behalf, I'm just a little nervous about changes where it's commercial and there's not a lot of commercial around us. So, thank you. Thank you. Next. Anyone to speak for or against your comments on this project? Anyone else? If not, I'm closing the public hearing. Commissioners, it's open to you for comment, questions, or a motion. Mr. Averwater. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this question is uh, directed to staff, I guess. Perhaps you can fill us in. I share the uh, comment or commenters concerns on possible future uses of this property could you go over the uh, commercial services as opposed to perhaps other where vaping and, and beer stores or, or 
anything else might be uh, can you co give us a comparison of what they're asking for what could possibly be done yes sir uh, I'd be happy to this as you know, of course is zoned uh, well they're asking for commercial services zoning uh, we have three commercial zones in the county well primarily uh, three commercial zones outside of like special character areas and things commercial neighborhood commercial services and commercial general commercial services is kind of the one that's in the middle of the road uh, it does allow for various retail uses. Would that include beer and alcohol sales? It would. Would that include, uh, you know, cigarette sales, vaping, whatever? Yes, it would include that. Um, now, commercial neighborhood would allow those uses, most of those uses as well, but just at a smaller scale. Uh, commercial neighborhood allows it at a maximum of 5,000 square feet, which, you know, the building she's proposing to build is a little under that. Uh, but it's there's a fairly wide range of uses commercial services it doesn't go quite as far as say commercial general which would allow like auto sales and things like that but um, it's still a pretty significant amount of uses now the plan development route that was brought up by uh, Commissioner Beverly of course would just limit it to one specific use another option might be office professional now that would eliminate any retail sales but somebody could have an office there or something like that without much of a problem I think that's what she was referring to the applicant when she was up here uh, a few moments ago so uh, now none of the commercial zones are going to allow like anything like industrial uses or anything like that uh, you know like you're not going to see like a truck dock or anything like that in those zones but uh, it's commercial services is got a, a fairly significant amount of, of different uses that could be allowed from a retail standpoint Mr. Coach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Doug, to be clear and make sure I heard you correctly, uh, a PUD uh, limits to one specific use, but you say it does limit retail sales. It could. It, it depends on what they ask for. It doesn't have to be just one specific use. She could have it say it's going to be these uses are going to be allowed, but nothing else. So, so in, there'd in, be a list of uses. So it wouldn't have to be just one. So in this yeah. instance, if it was to uh, continue to be or, or, or to be a woodworking shop with the sale of wood made samples products, or things like that yeah yeah that would that would be forbidden or would be allowed well if, sh if they made that as part of their pattern book that would be allowed they could do that check thank you based on what I heard tonight was that ever discussed with the applicant as an option for her so she can get to roll and have a renter and get this thing rolling for her benefit sounds like the neighbors are all right with that yeah, use we didn't specifically talk about a plan development approach i'd like to hear from her if she'd be open to that looks like to me this okay. is pretty well uh, we'll ask the applicant come back up Yes, totally open to that. <laughs> it was never our intention to bring in any alcohol, vaping, nothing like that. Um, when I first began thinking about this project like three years ago, because my father owns this piece of land and I graduated business school and I was thinking about entrepreneurship and what we could do with what we already have in our resources in our family and I it was not my intention to start a liquor store that's not where my passions lie more so just bringing in like local people who can have the opportunity to sell their goods or do what they like to do but have a place to do it because I was also friends and peers with a lot of people who had these business ideas who essentially would eventually need places to make them come to fruition, um, so that was my main goal. So I just got also another understanding of what a PUD is and what you, like there's, let's say there's 10 options and two of those is one's cigarettes and one's alcohol. I can say I want all the other eight and not those two, completely fine. I think that's totally fair, because I don't, it's not my intention to bring in anything that scares the community or brings in bad energy. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chair, um, Doug, is it is it would it be your recommendation, Doug, that we defer this for 30 days, or do you think there is enough um, knowledge on on the applicant's part to we could go ahead and make a motion 
tonight and you work that out together or what what do you think your the recommendation should well be? I, th I think the best course of action here <clears throat> with a plan development there's a lot more on the front end it 30 days wouldn't be enough time my probably that the best course of action here would be for the applicant to just pull this off the agenda and then she can come back and we just create a new application because this just let this one kind of go by the wayside and then kind of move forward with a new application as a plan development of course she'll have to you know have a neighborhood meeting and, and several other things uh, before it even gets to planning commission so yeah 30 days wouldn't be enough time anyway to get that done so that would be my recommendation this is just me talking sure okay i, I cannot speak for the rest of the commission I think you have a better chance of having this be successful in the way you want it to be successful if you pull this, go to a PUD, and come back with a, a specific list of uh, things that could happen in the store from a woodworking standpoint and a retail standpoint that would make the neighborhood feel good, make us feel good, and it, I think it would make it easier to get to your end goal. Sure. So that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. so. Is that what you wish to do? Just to Yeah. Okay. The applicant's requesting that it be, be pulled. Then we're done. We're Thank done. you. That's, that's all you have to do to say you wish to request to be pulled. Thank you. We're moving now to item two. Rob Moulton with SEC Incorporated for Donald L. Bruce, REZ 24011, location 5646 Woodbury Pike, Commissioner's District 4, Robert P. Jr. Size of site is approximately 7.6 acres, tax map 104, parcel 166.0. Existing zonings, residential medium density RM, proposed zonings, commercial general. Mr. DeMossi. Yes, sir, thank you. As you stated, they're asking for commercial general zoning to build a new boat and RV storage facility. Uh, you do have a concept plan with your agenda materials. Again, as we discussed, that's not a binding plan, but it does give you an idea as to how they're looking to develop the property. They're looking to place an office on here with parking lot about 77, 20 by 50 foot storage units, about 3.18 acres of open space, and about a three quarters of an acre of stormwater detention area, which would be a total building area of about 77,600 square feet uh, and additional vehicular use area as well. Uh, this use is classified as an automotive parking type use in the county zoning ordinance. As such, this is only a use that's allowed by special exception in the commercial general zone. So in other words, even if the zoning happened to be approved through this process, they would still have to go to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a special exception. Approval of the zoning would not approve this specific use. Uh, the concept plan does show primary access being off of John Bragg Highway. Uh, you do see that there is an office uh, closer to that side along with some customer parking there toward the front. Uh, the concept plan also does show access off of Woodbury Pike, again, although the, the uh, primary access would be along John Bragg Highway. And if this should be approved, of course, the compliance would have to be shown on an engineered site plan that meets all of the county regulations as well as state because John Bragg Highway is a state road, so TDOT approval would be necessary. Uh, properties zoned commercial general are required to install a type two buffer adjacent to any residentially zoned property, which would be along the eastern and western property lines should this be approved. The Board of Zoning Appeals can also condition approval upon any use for a, a special exception. They can put reasonable conditions for things like additional screening and whatnot if they do feel it's necessary. But again, that would have to also be shown and demonstrated on a site plan and our performance standards would also have to be met. Uh, I believe the uh, applicant is present, uh, and as well as the applicant's representative is here. Uh, some of the adjacent uses you can see on the uh, aerial photo there, there's a, an existing uh, nursery to the west of the property right there. Uh, there's also several uh, residential homes in the area as well, uh, and then across from uh, John Bragg Highway as well, some, some tracks in that area as well. So uh, with that, uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Doug, just to be clear for myself, the audience, and the rest of the commission, this is not a self-storage facility as we know it. This is strictly an RV and boat storage. That's correct. 
Yes, sir. Okay. So in my mind, that tells me this is very seasonal. Winter time, not much use of boats and RVs, so probably not a lot of business, not a lot of traffic, let me say. Summertime, probably more active, right? So this is just for outside storage. It looks like they have can individual canopies. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. um, are they just canopies or are they actual locked garage type units? Do you know? I'm not positive. I know the applicant can speak okay. a little more to that. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Other questions for staff? If not, I'll ask that the representative or applicant come forward. Good evening. Good evening, Rob Moulton, 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Uh, thank you all for your time tonight and consideration of this matter. Um, my applicant, Mr. Bruce, is looking to rezone this property to Commercial General for the intention of a boat and RV storage facility, as you saw at your concept plan. Um, right now it is a concept. We have not fully finished doing any design work, pending the approval potentially of the rezoning on the property. But as you can see, we've got a major access point to uh, John Bragg. That would be our front door where we had the sales office with the parking lot. This will be a gated facility. So it will be code, you know, code key in order to get into the facility in regards to the storage area on the property. The buildings themselves, as Mr. Mr. Cush requested that on that side, and Doug has some pictures we can pull up to kind of show you what we intend the buildings. But these will be fully enclosed storage buildings on that side. So this will be roll up doors with locks on them. So if one, you gotta get past the security gates at the two entrances, and then you'll have uh, gated, you know, your locks on the doors on each of the units themselves on that side. So this is a fully enclosed storage building on that side. So this kind of gives you some ideas of what, these are some of the newer ones that were built out by Smithville uh, up, at the, up at the lake on that side. So this is the intent of what the structures will look like. Now this would not be gravel, this would be paved as per, you know, the requirements for the county on that side. So just more or less just some images to give you some ideas about what the minimal finish would be for the buildings in regards to them being metal structures with roll up, roll up doors on that side. So that's the intent for the property on that side. Again, you know, we would be also including with this property, we would be doing the type two reduced buffer. Um, that would require us to install a fence. So we're going down to 15 foot. So we'll still have the inclusion of the landscaping, but we'll also be including a six foot tall PVC opaque fence along the perimeter as well, but then that'll be on the east and west sides of the property since the other two pieces of the property front on the public rights way, we're not required to put a buffer there. So that's the what we're trying to do in regards to our mitigation. As Doug talked about, the property on the west is a zoned RM, but it is technically a business in regards to the nursery and to our east are two residential properties with single family homes on them. So, so we're going to make certain that we make certain that if this goes forward that we're providing those buffers to screen off the RV storage from those neighbors on that side. So I'm available for any questions now or after the public hearing. Commissioners? Mr. Averwater. How tall do you anticipate, uh, how tall will, the, will these buildings be? They'll be about 16 to 18 foot tall, you know, tall enough so that we have to have a roll of door for the RV to fully pull in. So if you did have a full blown RV that you wanted to store on the property, those doors would be large enough for it to pull in on that side. Boats, of course, those will vary in heights and sizes based on the type of boat in regards to those, but we're looking at 16 to 18 foot tall is where we're looking at the buildings at this point in time. Still well under the minimums for 35 foot for maximum heights in the buildings. Other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. We'll now go into, I'm calling the public hearing period open. It'll be similar to what I announced in the first issue. Only with this one right here, I'm going to ask something a little bit different. If there are, I see we have a number of people and I don't know which item you're here for. But what I'm gonna ask you, if there are some of you that are representing a group of people, let me know and I can give you a little bit of extra time, a couple more minutes than what you may need. I can do that if you're representing several people in your community. But those of you that are just representing yourself and what you want to say and whatever, 
when we have a large group like this, I usually ask those that are going to do that to, to form somewhat of a line over here on this north side, three and four at a time. And when you see that line starting to go down, then you ne the next ones walk up there. And that way we keep it moving because um, that way uh, it, it keeps us uh, on a, a continuous scale of time and what we've got to do. So we just ask you if you would do that and the first one start over here on this side to come around and we'll do that. You'll have exactly three minutes to give your time and uh, to say what you want to say. So. The first three, whoever they are, don't everybody rush at one time, but we'd like for you to do that. So we've got four already started that way, and we'll, we'll begin that, and uh, we'll have the timer set. So yes, sir, you'll be first. Come on up here and start. Your name and address, please. Jake Veer, 2922 Arthur Drive, Murfreesboro, 37127. Yes, go. Okay. Hello. My name is Jake Veer, and I am part owner of Colorburst Plant Farm. My fourth great-grandfather, James C. Carnahan, was once held prisoner in the courthouse on this very square by the Union Army in 1862. He was rescued by Nathan Bedford Forrest the day before he was set to be executed. My family roots run very deep in this beautiful county, and I hope to see them extend for many more generations. My great-grandfather, State Trooper John D. Sanford, who is also a founding member of CUD, bought 50 acres neighboring the property of which we oppose the rezoning of today. Colorburst is on residential land that has a six-acre agricultural exemption. We are not a commercial property in the slightest. I am the fourth generation in my family to use the land for agricultural purposes, which provide income to help my family live a humble and respectful life. Rezoning 5646 to commercial can put all of that into jeopardy. The sinkholes on the property play an integral role in keeping rainwater from rushing onto our nursery and keeping our wells operational by filling the underground reservoirs. Whether it is a storage facility or a much lower impact commercial property, the changing of the lay of the land would be devastating to say the least. Kittrell is an often overlooked, undervalued, and forgotten area of Rutherford County. However, it is a tight-knit community. It is also one of the last remaining rural areas in Rutherford County. The drive down John Bragg in both spring and fall is second to none. Changing this land to commercial zoning opens a Pandora's box to future development, which are sure to include strip malls with subway sandwich shops and tobacco stores. Myself and the many longtime Kittrell residents here tonight fully oppose this land changing from residential to commercial of any sort. It is surrounded on three sides by residential neighbors and many more residential neighbors in the area who also oppose the rezoning. Any sort of commercial property would stick out sorely. It will increase traffic on an already dangerous highway where there are weekly accidents and also bring more wandering eyes around residents' properties who have unfortunately already experienced both theft and trespassers attempting to break in. The will of long li lifelong residents in an area should carry much more weight than a developer's plan. We have many of those lifelong residents here tonight. I'd like to thank Mr. Bud Mitchell and Mr. Jerry Robinson for their support in zone, opposing this zoning change. They are well-respected leaders in our community, and they want what is best for the Kittrell area, and I truly appreciate them being here tonight. Thank you also to the over 1,350 residents who signed our petition. Kittrell and the neighboring community is near and dear to my heart, and all of us want to keep it how it is, peaceful, beautiful, and residential. Please do not allow this rezoning to go through. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Next. Good evening. My name is Matt Veer. I live at 5546 Woodbury Pike, uh, Murfreesboro 37127. And I am the, one of the owners also of uh, Colorburst Plant Farm at 5850 John Bragg Highway. My wife Jody and I live at 5546, and we have occupied we have a an occupied rental home on our property next to us at 5562 Woodbury Pike. Colorburst Plant Farm is a thriving agriculture entity that has been at this location for 20 years. In each of those 20 years, our business has done better than the year before. We are third generation owners of this property. 
The new owner of the land just east of our property at 5646 Woodbury Pike is requesting a zoning change from residential medium to commercial. My first concern, if the property in question or even a portion of the property is graded and leveled, and as I heard tonight, uh, uh, blacktop would also be put down possibly, we will see excessive flooding on our property, which already floods during heavy rain events. All the water from any rainstorm that lands on the properties from Floration Road all the way down to Coleman Road drains through our property before it hits Dry Creek along Coleman Road. I've seen Coleman Road uh, flood several times as well. Second concern, there are at least four sinkholes on the property in question that accept tens of thousands of gallons of water during the, these heavy rain events. These, if these sinkholes are remediated, the amount of water runoff could increase dramatically and flood our property. The rainwater that makes its way into the sinkhole and feeds the four wells on our property, which we had drilled in order to accommodate our nursery, could, decre uh, could decrease uh, drastically. If there's any blasting on the sites, I don't know if there's blasting intended or not, but that could uh, affect our wells. It may not, but it may as well. I'm not willing to um, take that chance. Third concern, the property in question has no park sites on the back two thirds of the land. If the land is graded, buildings with large roofs are installed, uh, which shed water very rapidly, the amount of water runoff will increase dramatically. Although detention basins can be installed, the water ultimately runs through our property and can, could create more water issues than we already have. And the fourth concern, any reputable storage facility should have nighttime lighting, security lighting. The immense amount of lighting to secure numerous acres would be disrupted to and unwanted by the local community. And my fifth and last concern, to change the zoning on this parcel of land that is bordered on three sides by occupied homes, um, from residential medium to commercial, is an antagonistic punch in the nose to the Kittrell community, in particular to the neighbors surrounding the property in question. Rutherford County is growing very, very rapidly, in my opinion, too rapidly, rapidly. It is up to you, our elected appointed officials, to guide the growth wisely and compassionately. I'm asking you not to change the zoning status at the property of uh, at 5646 Woodbury Pike. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Corey Edmonds. I'm at 5712 Woodbury Pike. I am right to the east of this proposed uh, rezoning parcel. Um, I have two things to mention tonight. The first is uh, why is a commercial rezoning even being considered for a parcel that's surrounded on three sides by active residential properties? I'm at least a fifth generation Rutherford County resident and the entire piece of land stretching from Floriton Road to Coleman Road has been in my family for many decades. Uh, the parcel in question today will split this family-owned land completely in half for no benefit for our community. Yes, there is a commercial property nearby where the Dollar General sits, but it benefits everyone in our, in our area and it is well kept. Mr. Bruce has a history of de-evaluating de property wherever he goes. He lines his pockets and lets everyone else lose value by building structures that are not aesthetically pleasing or useful to its area. Even if the storage units are not built, by rezoning this to a commercial property, he can return and build a junkyard or worse or anything out there um, if the rezoning passes. Um, how is that any benefit to the Kittrell community? Second mention that I have is I've always been told by my grandparents that no commercial structure could be built on this original piece of land before, in, before it was divided among the children. I work with deeds and easements daily and I'm very familiar with the research of them. I came across a deed restriction for the original property. I did not get this in in time for electronic submittal, so if anybody would like copies, I have that. Uh, on the deed restriction, it says that no open air or other kind of theater, no dance hall or beer parlor, public garage service stations shall be erected or maintained on either the property herein conveyed or on the part of the Bennett property retained. Bennett property was who my grandparents bought it from. Um, and they were uh, directly across the Old Weirbury Highway from this location. And, um, and run with the land, be hiding, and I'll, let's see, upon the parties, a bunch of wording. But anyway, to me, and this was done in November of 1957, they were really stressing 
that this would be no commercial opportunities ever um, to be put on the property. That's what Mr. Bennett wanted. That's what my grandfather signed it. I have a copy of it, if anybody would like to see that copy. But um, going back to the um, uh, Mr. Bennett, he uh, lived across the road. My grandfather purchased the land from him in 57. This was a protection for Mr. Bennett and didn't realize until now that it was a protection for us as well. Um, I feel this document states that no commercial zoning or building can ever be built on this property. It says forever to the, all the heirs and whoever buys it. And I just hope y'all can, uh, with this much support we have tonight, um, I just hope that y'all consider uh, saying no to this rezoning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. My name is Jill Edmonds and I also live at 5712 Woodbury Pike, directly beside the property proposed for rezoning. Myself, along with the Veers, created a petition against zoning this property as commercial. As of 5.57 p.m. today, we have a total of 1,410 signatures between our online petition and also the signatures obtained by knocking on doors in the surrounding area. I have all of them here if you'd like to see them. As a staff member of Kittrell Elementary School for the past 16 years, as well as living in the community for the past 25 years, I feel that I have a good gauge on what the people of Kittrell want. They desperately want to keep Kittrell the beautiful rural community that it is. After having spoken with many community members, they have all expressed their extreme displeasure of the possible commercialization of this property. We truly believe there will be no benefit to the community for this property to be rezoned commercial. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. I'm Casey Vaughn. I live at 4071 High Ship. I've been around the neighborhood actually working with the ball committee that they've started trying to clean our neighborhood up. We're trying to get new, nicer things that will benefit our community. Our community is a rural poor community, as you've heard from others. Maybe five or ten percent of our community could even afford an RV. Maybe twenty if you stretch out and get the ones that have boats like me. But most of those people have enough property to park them on. Y'all are trying to put in something that's going to benefit neighborhoods that have HOAs that don't allow RVs because they don't want to look at them. We don't want them dumped on us. Drive down the interstate and look at these new dealerships they're putting. They're the biggest eyesore out there. Nashville just had something on there. All Metro Police, all storage units, 75% up on crime. We're trying to reduce crime in our neighborhood. We are willing for growth, but we want the correct kind of growth, and we want the nice things that everybody else expects. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening, my name is Katie Veer, 506 Kingwood Drive, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37129. As I have said, I'm Katie Veer. I am the sister to Jake Veer and the daughter of Matt Veer. I really wanted to emphasize the potential negative impact, Mr. Bruce, that this would have on my family. This is a multi-generational farm that we have that would be devastated, absolutely <laughs> demolished, potentially, by any construction on this property. My dad has loved plants for as long as I can remember. Before I was born, he went to college and studied about plants. He went to MTSU. When I was little, we grew up learning how to put plants in the ground and how to take care of them properly. We have pictures all around my parents' house and in my dad's office of us working <laughs> on his business and also just in our home. You don't really appreciate necessarily the importance of tradition and stuff like that until you have children. My son is four months old. I am very much looking forward to teaching him about growing plants. I brought with me today a plant that my dad doesn't even grow. A friend gave me this several years ago. This is called a spider monkey plant. I have three spiderlings in it that I grew myself that, Mr. Bruce, I want to give to you if you're willing to accept it as a way to think of our family and to think about how much love has been poured into our business that would be devastated by the wells collapsing or by potential flooding. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next.
I'm Cheryl Edmonds. I live at 5762 Woodbury Road. <clears throat> My in-laws bought, along with John D. Sanford, bought this piece of property from Coleman Road to Floration Road. It was all family. I live in the inn house on Floridan Road. And if they put this commercial place in there, it's devastated our family. It's gonna split me and my son from the beers and all that property. And that's all family. And my father-in-law bought the uh, property from Earl Bennett, which is across the road, which was also family. And we have got a wonderful neighborhood. We've got families that really care about their houses and keep their property up. And I hate to see it destroyed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Excuse my anxiousness. My name is Jennifer, and I'm the resident of 7903. <clears throat> I think after 40 years, you'd get good at this. <laughs> Pull your mic down just a little bit there. There you go. <laughs> I'm not tall either. My name is Jennifer, and I own and reside at 7903 Woodbury Pike. My desires in a home may seem modest to most people. The last number of days I've scheduled off to work in my home garden. Sorry, I get anxious. Years ago when I set out house hunting, I wanted the square footage outside, not in a giant closet. And I found my home. I wanted no white pollution. Did you know that basically any time that I drive from this very place to my house, it's about five degrees cooler because it's agricultural. The wildlife I've seen is breathtaking. Coyotes, hummingbirds, deer, foxes. We even had an owl turn his head all the way around as we were leaving. Over the years, development has spread. And with it has spread Bradford pears, higher traffic. The stargazing that I've once enjoyed is now drone after drone flying overhead, creepily close to my property. The zoning council's purpose is supposed to be protect neighborhoods. Now, just because my neighborhood doesn't have a big brick mortar and a cool, catchy name and somebody manicuring it doesn't make us less of a neighborhood. We don't have block parties. I call the owners of the cattle farm across the street from me when I see something looking wrong with their cows. So this storage lot, it's going to facilitate people that aren't our neighborhood. And maybe, maybe you all don't see us as a neighborhood, but we are, and I think we're showing. Thank you. Thank you. Next. I'm, uh, I'm Bud Mitchell, and uh, I've, li I've li lived at uh, 3509 uh, Woodbury Road for the biggest part of my life. But uh, I'm here representing. Uh, my friends, but I call them my family. I've been going up and down that road for 70 something years. And uh, these people are my family. And I would like to keep it that way because we've seen so many things put up that hadn't added to the community. And the community is, is a family too. And I would like it to keep it that way. Now I have two businesses on the Woodbury Road there, been there since 1946. But uh, I would like to see if something is put there, it be in line with what is already there. And I think that this is what everybody is saying that we need to do. Uh, we don't need a, another mess out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Thank you all. I'm Jerry Robinson. I live at 5356 L. Woodbury Pike. I'm in between John Bragg Highway and L. Woodbury Highway there. Very familiar with the area there. I was born and raised where I'm at right now. Watch that area grow some. Most of it's residential. Very little business. One dollar stores out there. 
Well, look at these storage facilities or boats. You get them down to boats and trailers now. How big a boat? How many boats can you put in there? How many, tra how many uh, campers can you put in there? I don't know. But that'll have some idea of what's happening there. Those things are in demand. Some of them things are. And they, you create some uh, people want to jump in there, cut a lot, and get in there. On what kind of security system you got? I don't know what the lighting, what you're going to have lighting up there. It's where you can just light the whole neighborhood up because we've got residential people right next to it. Got the nursery right next to that. We try to hold things together out there. Most of us born and raised out that way. Our grandchildren out there. I've got six grandkids right down there next to it. That bus comes over to pick them up. Uh, they got that's daytime operation generally. But uh, it's a lot of, we've got a lot of interlopers in there. They come through my yard and I've had to kind of call the police there several times. They want to have got some bushes in there right next to that great old dry creek comes through. And you're inviting trouble right there. And uh, uh, I just don't know about uh, how much storage. I don't see them about footage out there, how big the RVs are. I never owned one in my life. I had a boat either. But I love swimming. I'm all right with that. But I don't know boats and them RV things. But that's up to them boys make a business. My priority is keeping neighbor, uh, neighborhoods safe and let's just watch what we're getting into because certain things draw certain people and that's the reason you know you got to watch what you're putting in things you can entertain a lot of, of thievery there I don't know how many people in Murfreesboro like an RV or a boat we're a boat country but uh, we got a lot of new people here and they're game to try anything we got folks we don't even know who's there out in our area we know each other know each other from Haines to Chapel all the way down to Pope Taylor's barbecue down there. Cover a pretty good area. We're pretty good. We're pretty good on security if it gets down to it, but we're, we're our, uh, we don't know what's going on, tell you that. I just won't invite anything. Uh, it's not for, like I say, safety and Rutherford County growing. It's going to grow, but what we put in there, what will allow to happen, I don't know. We'll be interested to see what square footage and things, the fence protection, all that stuff. So several questions there are just I'd like to just see it, some idea of what they are going to do. Appreciate your time, folks. Always good to see you. Go balls. <laughs> Next. Hi, my name is Tracy Whipple, and I live at 6068 Woodbury Pike. Um, as you can tell from my lack of accent, I am new to Tennessee. I've lived in Kittrell for eight years. Um, I moved there because I love plants. I have probably the biggest oak tree in the neighborhood. I'm sure you guys have seen it, um, just on the corner of Floration and, and Woodbury Pike. And I moved to the area because I enjoy agriculture, horticulture. I work as a landscaper, and I am a customer of Color Burst, a loyal customer. I need their perennials for my job, where I try to make Murfreesboro look as beautiful as it can. I take care of a lot of properties um, in Murfreesboro a little bit in Smyrna. Um, I just, it's really hard for me to think about the neighborhood changing. Um, those homes on either side of the property, uh, they're, they're nice big properties with nice, really well-kept manicured homes. It's, it's a beautiful drive. When I leave here, I will be going up Maine, and when it turns into Woodbury Pike, I know I'm getting close to home. Um, I just, I don't see anything commercial fitting in to what Kittrell is, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Next. My name is Kim Bailey, and um, I live at 10606 Vault Road in Reederville, Tennessee, which is just east of Kittrell, if you're not familiar. Um, my husband Mike and I are relatively new to the community. Uh, we bought our property in 2013 and moved out of um, a subdivision in Murfreesboro for the country life. Um, I grew up in Woodbury. Um, my relatives came into the area in 1797. So I'm a Cannon County native. Uh, I have been blessed to live in Murfreesboro now for about 40 years. And um, we, or Rutherford County, I won't say just Murfreesboro, but uh, we love the area we're in and we want to preserve the rural qualities. That's the reason we bought there. And I know we're not alone in that. I see many people in this room that I know, including the Edmonds, and I know that that's what they love about where we all live. I just want to mention two lines from the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission staff report uh, for today's meeting. Um, if you will look at purpose of district, uh, which is the 
third point down uh, under the heading on page 12 of the 46 page SharePoint document. Uh, the last line in that section says, these districts should be well separated from residential districts. As has been pointed out by everyone who spoke, this is not separated from a residential district. It is in the middle of a residential district. Yes, there's a four lane highway in front of it and a two lane former state road in back of it. But those exist and it's the first state road, so they've always been there before any of us were born and before most of our relatives showed up, or at least as they were showing up. So it is a busy, highly traveled road, but we live there, we love it, we want to keep it a community. The second thing that I want to point out is under site characteristics, the next point on that page 12 of the document. And uh, under adjacent uses, it says, this property is surrounded by similar residential tracks. I think those two lines say that this rezoning needs to be denied. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Jennifer Vaughn and I live at 4071 High Ship Road. Um, I have a concern that I debated on whether bringing to attention, but I can't live with myself if I don't bring it to the attention and this is approved. Um, with storage units of any kind, whether it's RV, or storage is not governed by any any type of, that I could find, I may be wrong, but um, governed by any type of uh, governed body, um, which would allow sex trafficking to um, be a problem. Um, I know it's the elephant in the room, but when you have RVs stored someplace it only allows for children to be taken advantage of. So if there is some kind of governing body, please let me know. If not, please think about that. You're putting it in a residential area. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Chairman Pete. Good evening. I hadn't seen this many people from Kittrell since we had our last ham breakfast out there. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you all being here. And uh, one thing I want to point out, I, I am Robert P., the County Commissioner in District 4, which is, this is, of course, part of my, my district. Um, we were talking about longevity a minute ago. Uh, my ancestors signed the petition to make Rutherford County a county. Our trustees, unfortunately, a couple of those guys were trustees, and uh, they put the first tax out to build the first big brick courthouse here in the county. So we've been around a while, and we care about preserving our county in our areas. And that's the point of what I was saying there. Again, the reason we're having a public hearing is to hear what the people want. You know, uh, a zoning request, there's a reason that there's public hearings, and that's so the neighbors in that area who are affected by that have a voice into what happens to the property that's adjacent to them. Now, I've, I've said this to several people in the past, and basically here's, here's my take on zoning. Is my rights end where yours begin, and yours end where my begin. Uh, if you look at those pictures up there, because I don't have to look at them, I, I know that land, I know that area. It's very prone to flooding, especially since John Bragg went across there. It's basically diking it, and it's forcing it all again in, in one big gush when we get a rain. That's where a lot of this flooding is coming from. We're talking about paving that area, I think that would acerbate the problems and make it even tougher. But it goes on and on. But if you, again, if you look at that, you're saying, well, what about those big commercial greenhouses there? Well, I beg to differ. That's a farm. These people have farmed that, suppose they've farmed that for the last 20 years or so. This is 
state has agricultural use by right. They don't need anything to do that from, a, from this committee or from the full commission. And that's basically what they're doing. And if you look right around those, you'll see their homes. They live on this property and they work that property. But the reason I'm standing up here uh, speaking today, I have not had one person call me other than the applicant's representative that is in favor for this, that lives in our community. As a matter of fact, we had people from outside of our community that have signed this petition. Uh, online petition is over 1,400 people. Just in the area alone, there's several hundred that have signed the paper petition. And you're welcome to look through those. But again, to me, this is about supporting the people that live there and are affected by this zoning change. And I would ask for you to deny any zoning change whatsoever. We don't want to see it out there. You know, that's possible in the future that someone might come up with an idea how to uh, put something in that would be a low impact and that would be welcome in the community. But I promise you guys, look around, count the number of voices on here saying, no, don't do this. This is not welcome in our community. And again, I would ask you, please deny this request. Thank you. Thank you. If I could add, uh, the next time you bring all these people from Kitchell, could you bring us some ham biscuits for dinner? <laughs> we will consider that strongly, so uh, <laughs> thank you. All right, anyone else? If not, the public hearing is closed at this time. Commissioners, it's open to you for discussion, questions, our motions. Ms. Averwater. Now, Mr. Chair, you know I'm going to ask a question. Thank you. <laughs> I do have a question for staff again. Uh, this is probably uh, addressed to our uh, county engineer. And looking at the topo map that was submitted by the applicant, it appears to be fairly flat, probably fairly rocky. But I'm trying to figure out the drainage on that you see a lot of 650s in there and I'm not sure how that property is draining unless it's going underground because I don't think that those are knolls on some of those areas. Can you explain what happens to that in the sur surrounding areas because we're talking about an awful lot of metal roof and a lot of pavement uh, on this property? Yes, sir. So I'll turn on the topo. You might give it just a second to draw but it looks like most of the drainage is heading towards the center western edge of the property and hold on just a second it these big uh, aerial images take a second to draw but you can kind of see this is the main drainage path through here everything's kind of moving to this central location but um, if you look at it, it looks like it will go underneath this barn right here. So that's why I'm thinking that um, if this is passed and they do move ahead to site plan, it's going to be uh, tricky to get that around uh, this barn and not impact it um, anymore. So, but it's, it kind of draws through this central location and then kind of goes off in this direction. So with those areas on the uh, that are shown as circles on the topo map, would those indicate sinkholes on the property? Most likely, it looks like a depression here. Um, I'm not sure of other ones. There might, yeah, there might be something right in this area here. Any anything that uh, gets worked on, um, if it's in the public right of way or uh, a house will a future house will be on it a, a future building we will require a geotechnical engineer to be on site to make sure it's closed properly um, and before that we would ask that the design engineer look at the impacts of drainage so there's several aspects that would have to be evaluated if this did move ahead Mr. Phillips. Mr. Chairman, I've heard a lot about drainage for 
30 something years. Um, the question of drainage, the question of traffic, all of those things will come up at site plan uh, and have to be worked out or it would not be approved at site plan. Our decision tonight is whether this piece of property is appropriate uh, for commercial general from residential. After hearing the debate and it was l <laughs> a little support and a lot of opposition, so the debate was really one-sided. Uh, it's it's um, obvious to me that this piece of property needs to remain the way it is, and it's my motion to disapprove. We have a motion to deny. Second. We have a second back here, open for further discussion. Madam Secretary, call the vote. Jim Averwater? Yes. Jeff Phillips? Yes. Mike Cush? Yes. Lee Vogel? Yes. Charlotte P? Yes. Trey Gooch? Yes. David Jones? Yes. Chip Pinion? Yes. Jim Thompson? I'm going to vote on this, but I want to make some one thing clear. I slept in an RV last night. I own an RV uh, parking spot, and I got places for all that. All this stuff about crime, about the only thing you're going to do that once in a while, somebody's going to steal one. But seriously, we need them in our area, but it's very clear this is the wrong location, so I vote to deny. Pettis Reed. No. I mean, yes. Motion carries. It fails. It has been denied. Moving on to item three. Item three, Rob Mocham with SEC Incorporated for Brandon and Danielle Machuso, REZ 24, 012, location 1880, East Compton Road. Commissioner District 4, Robert P. Jr. Size of site is approximately 9.5 acres. Tax map 67A, Group D, parcels 1 to 103. Existing zoning, residential medium density, RM, proposed zonings, plan unit development, PUD for retreat, event menu. Mr. DeMossi. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. As you stated, the applicant is proposing to rezone this property from RM to PUD to create a event venue slash retreat, what we call retreats in our zoning ordinance for a facility called Compton Caves. The zoning ordinance requires that applications for retreats on less than 10 acres have to submit a PUD request. So that is why you're seeing this come through. If there were over 10 acres and limited the number of events, they might have been able to go through a special exception process, but the property just wasn't big enough for that. Uh, there is an app, the applicant did provide a pattern book, which is included on your uh, iPads, and we also have a copy for the big screen if we need to uh, look at that for any particular reason. Uh, there's a statement there that I added to the staff comments directly from the pattern book. Uh, I won't read the entire thing there for you, but that just kind of gives you an idea of what they are looking to do. They've been using Compton Caves for photog photography sessions, and I want to create a venue to add what are called micro weddings and private events. Now, not being familiar with a lot of the wedding lingo, uh, I, we had to look up exactly what a macro wedding was, and we did find a definition that, and, and, you know, take this with a, uh, with a grain of salt. I don't think this is a, a, a definite uh, or the only definition of one. Micro weddings versus macro wedding. You can see there's a little bit of an explanation there that we found on uh, on some websites. Whereas anything with a micro wedding is described as 50 guests or less. Anything larger than that is, t is typically uh, described as, as macro or something uh, something other than, than that. Again, I would look at the pattern book for additional details. And, and Mr. Mulchin is here. I'm sure he'll go through the, uh, the pattern book here in just a moment. So I don't want to take his thunder. 
Uh, we first met with the applicants on this use back in August of 2022. We discussed a variety of issues as we would normally uh, on these type of meetings and with other folks that look to do these type of uses or other rezonings, including the process itself, how to get through the zoning process, building fire codes issues, things like that. Uh, the applicant expressed a desire to construct and pr the proposed building on the property, but just as a residential accessory structure, which could be upgraded at a later date. So a permit for the construction of a 2,400 square foot, 40 by 60 residential accessory structure was issued in September of 2022. A uh, foundation inspection was requested by the applicants on uh, November, in November of 2022. And it was discovered at that time that the structure was not located as it was shown on the permit application. Location. The new location actually straddled the property line between two properties, both of which the applicant did own. So the, inf the inspection at that time was failed. Uh, we did advise the applicant they would either need to relocate the structure or combine the properties into one larger track, which would eliminate the property line issue, which is what they did. Uh, they did combine the properties by plat, and that was recorded back in March of last year. Uh, we did start receiving complaints on this property for the outdoor photography sessions. Uh, we did contact the applicants regarding the business, and they completed a minor home-based business form, which was approved by staff back in January of 2023. Uh, we did make clear to the applicants at that point that they would need to stay within the parameters of a minor home-based business and that failure to, failure to do so could result in zoning enforcement action. Uh, we also were made aware that the applicants did have a website for Compton Caves that was being used for booking events on the property. Upon viewing the website, uh, we did see that there were various services being offered, including elopements, weddings on Sunday yeah, Sunday through Friday and then Saturday weddings and there's some attachments in your staff report showing those. So each time we did receive a complaint, uh, we did reach out to the applicants to ascertain the nature of these events and to reinforce either the structure that was built nor the use of the property had been approved for these kind of events and the applicants did tell us at that point that they were private. As a uh, kind of a precursor to this meeting, uh, as with any plan development application, you do have to have a neighborhood meeting that was held by the applicants back in February of last year, consistent with those requirements. Uh, there were several residents in the area that attended and they did, staff was there as well, and along with the county commissioner and several others. Uh, and our, there were many ex concerns expressed uh, during that time about the use of the property, traffic noise, uh, uh, and things like that. Uh, complaints intensified during the summer of 2023, as did our involvement in trying to bring the property into the compliance with zoning and building fire code requirements. Uh, these efforts culminated in a letter sent to the applicants in October of 2023 via certified mail, outlining previous attempts at abatement and also consequences should there be a failure to comply with county regulations. Again, I've included a copy of that letter with your staff reports, along with some other attachments and uh, whatnot. Uh, this concept plan that you see in the pattern book uh, does indicate the primary entrance will be off East Compton Road, one travel lane for traffic entering the development. Now, since this access does not meet the minimum fire code requirements, the applicants are proposing to improve the access onto Saddle Drive. So you, on Saddle Drive, you see one lane for entering, one lane for le uh, leaving as well. Uh, the county zoning ordinance does not allow for retreats to be accessed using private easements. So even though the applicant does own that track that accesses East Compton Road, we've informed them should this be approved, they would need to combine those uh, via a plat. There would also have to be an engineered site plan should this application be approved as well. Uh, property zone PUD are required to install a type two buffer adjacent to residentially zoned properties. Existing plans can be counted to satisfy those buffering requirements. The pattern book, and again, I know Mr. Mulchin will, will go over this here in a moment, does show a type two buffer along the north side of the property along uh, adjacent to the existing houses that are there. And the rest of the site is heavily wooded and is proposed to stay that way. Uh, the pattern books also shows parking lot headlight screens along the parking area that face the adjacent residential lots to the north. Again, all this would need to be shown on an engineered site plan should this application be approved as well as con perform, uh, conformance with our performance standards as well, especially dealing with sound amplification, outdoor lighting and those kind of things. Um, Several concerns we brought up to the uh, the applicant's representative, of course, increased stormwater runoff with additional paving for the access drives and ADA compliant parking spots. 
the structure being proposed for venue hall was constructed as an accessory structure, has never been finalized, so codes would have to be uh, brought in as well as our fire marshal to make sure that the building meets minimum building and fire code requirements as well. Uh, there have been other events, event venues or retreats uh, approved closer to residential areas. Uh, one of our more recent examples would be uh, Macavilla, as you remember that one on uh, West Jefferson Pike. However, that's uh, a traffic was a concern with that one as well as it is with this. However, West Jefferson Pike, in our opinion, was more equipped to handle larger traffic volumes than either East Compton Road or Saddle Drive. And we also have some site distance issues, uh, potential site distance issues that for a Saddle Drive and also East Compton Road that staff has a, a little bit of concern about as well. Uh, with that, uh, the applicant is present. Uh, of course, the representative, Mr. Mulchin, is present as well. And uh, with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner? Ben, I'm the newest guy here. I got asked a question. Are we approving this thing as a rezoning and a PUD, or are we just rezoning it? What well, it's one and the same. It's a rezoning right. for a PUD. Okay. Yes, sir. And then are we looking at is it a retreat? Event venue is it a wedding venue? Is it well, it's studio? A what we yeah. We, we classify these uses as retreats in our zoning ordinance. Okay. Now it's a retreat that's being used as an event venue, basically. So it's you know we it's mixed terminology, but it's meaning the same thing. Okay, so we can have a wedding there. We can do photography. That's correct. There. And then on the fire protection, are we looking? Would they have to sprinkle that, or would a fire hydrant do? What, what are we looking at? I there? will defer to either our building direct building codes director or our uh, fire marshal on that. It depends on. I know a lot of the uh, occupancy of the building. It, it depends on several factors, um, but based on the building size and the occupancy, we've been based on what we've determined to this point, it would be. What's the occupancy of the building? What are we looking at occupancy? Based on the pattern book. They are looking to uh, design the interior of the building in such a way that it would be maxed out at 97 persons, I believe. And, and Josh, telling you, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I believe once it hits 100, that's where the sprinkler regulations kick that, in. Is that that's correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. So what we've the initial assessment was they would likely have to have fire sprinkler protection. Um, as Director Bell was discussed with me, we, they have made attempts to reduce the floor plan or the the occupancy area that would. Uh, thereby remove that requirement for the first for sprinkling goes. Sorry to bore y'all with all them questions. I'm just new at this. Thank you. Commissioner, Commissioner Bowen. Just a one follow-up question to that really quick. The occupancy of the building being projected at 97 does not prevent them from having a whole lot more people on the outside, correct? I mean, as far as the site itself, it doesn't limit the site, it just limits the building occupied at one time. Technically, that's correct, yes. Technically. Right. Um, some of the things we're dealing with on this or some of the information we have, I wanted to make sure we got the technical in there Yeah, as well. no, absolutely. Obviously, the occupant load is designed to, to say how many people you can fit in the building. In the building. Right. So, but and, they can have outside 300 of that, outside. If they put or, people on the outside, there's there's no real okay, fire, I just building fire make sure. goes, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Commissioner P. Uh, I'm trying to, there's a lot of information here. I'm trying to sum it up. Uh, it looks like they started a home, they got permission or they've got a permit to build a structure, but they didn't build the structure where they got the permit to build the structure. It, it says, and then they had a home base business before they got the license for a home base business and then they were doing weddings without a uh, license, correct? Well, without zoning approval. We have, and then we have two violations on here, letters of violation, were there only two? Or were there more than that? There were only two letters among many, many phone calls. Okay. Other questions? All right, I'll ask that the representative would come forward this time.
Good evening again, Rob Moulton, SEC, on behalf of the Mancusos who are here tonight with me as well. Um, I think I want to kind of go through the plan real quick, if that would be the starting point. I think I'd want to go on that so we can have the uh, plan pulled up on the screen there for everybody to see in regards to the property. The, um, the structure in question is at the, hold on a second here. There he is, right there. So the structure in question, you can see there located in the central middle portion, Mike's pointed out right there, that is the uh, venue barn that was constructed. Um, as Doug talked about, it was constructed and they did manage to go back and then replat the lot to make it a singular lot so that the building was not non-compliant with setbacks and such on that side. But this is the structure that they want to host the weddings and birthday parties and other little events like that on that side. So the structure there on that side is more or less back of the property. And what we're looking at doing with the property is continuing to use the existing driveway off of East Compton. It is a beautiful little picturesque drive up to the house. It is a magnolia lined driveway. So more or less, if you think about Augusta, if you're a golfer, think about that type of atmosphere leading up to this wedding or birthday party event venue on that side for that. So that's kind of where that kind of comes up the middle off of East Compton. As you come back into the property, you pass by their home. That's their actual residence where the Mancusos live. So they'll be still maintaining ownership of the house and living in that house as well. And as you come further into the site and coming up to the barn itself, there's a garage, an existing garage on the property. They'll still be using that as part of their residential component on that side. And it potentially has a little bit of some storage too for the facility at large in regards to the photography sessions and hopefully the wedding events and other birthday parties and such on the property. What you can see to the right of the building itself in regards to that is what we provided is an access drive for fire vehicles, but it was also currently also conceived to be our exit point for traffic to leave the facility. Now, it's not to say we won't have traffic going back out to East Compton, but we're also providing an access point to saddle so that vehicles leaving any events can go either direction in regards to movement out of this. And if you think about a wedding, if you've ever been to weddings, which I'm sure you most have, traffic generally comes at one time and generally leaves at one time. You may have a straggler here and there that comes and goes in between, but for the most part, traffic will be coming at one point in time and leaving at another point in time in a relative fashion on that side. So we're looking at the opportunities providing access to saddle as a, a means of ingress, egress, but mostly for egress and relieving the property on that side. But that access point that's currently a driveway to saddle for the residents on the property is going to be upgraded to a two lane paved cross section that provides for fire access to the property. As part of our fire protection process on this, we've Josh and, and Tanya have gone and have gone through this a bunch in regards to this, whether it's sprinkled or not. Uh, the intent is that since we're minimizing the floor plan to be less than the 100 occupants, that it makes this go to that threshold for sprinklers. We're going to work on, and work, this is through CUD that we worked on this, we're going to go ahead and extend a, or us it's a upgrade the water line on Saddle Drive from a six inch water line to an eight inch water line and provide a fire hydrant location at that access point on Saddle. That gets us within 150 feet of the structure. So that would suffice the fire code in regards to having a fire hydrant with fire flows to adequately fight a fire in that facility if it was there was an emergency situation on that side. So in order to do that, the Mancusos will be taking on a very hefty cost to bear to extend that water line up to facilitate having the property fired at code for the fire marshal. Um, so you can see there that that access drive will also provide for uh, movement up to the building where we're providing our paved handicap spots to the right hand side of the building. The tannish areas that you see along those driveways would be the gravel parking spaces. So we didn't want to pave those. We wanted those to be not be, uh, imp uh, be pervious services so that we would help with some of the stormwater on that. I know there's some comments in your staff report that Doug, uh, Doug and Mike had talked about in regards to stormwater. Um, we are going to work if this would go forward. We would definitely work with staff to make certain we are taking care of mitigating all of our stormwater concerns on the property by detention and or drainage in some form or fashion but by utilizing gravel parking spaces would help with lowering some of those per pervious services and reducing some of our stormwater on that side. Um, 
regards to um, access, um, I know Doug and them had some concerns in regards to Saddle Drive at East Compton. Um, at further review of that, there are some trees if you come to that intersection as you're coming down Saddle. So if we use the back side as an exit out, come to East Compton, there are some trees on the right hand side property. And there's also a vertical curve issue on that side. So there's some things we will have to look at if the site plan would come forward in regards to those opportunities for that to be an exit point on that side. Um, some other notes and things to talk about. Um, you know, this is a very picturesque property. The reason the Mancusos actually owned the house on the, uh, if you can go back to the plan there, Mike. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner of the plan there, the Mancusos actually lived at that property originally. And when this property became available for purchase, they purchased the property with the uh, intent of utilizing this property because of the fact it is a very unique piece of property to Rutherford County. It has two caves on it. And as you saw in the cover image of the book that you have with you tonight, that is the main cave that resides below their actual residence on the property. So when they bought the house that they originally lived in and this property became available, they felt that this was an opportunity to provide a location for photography weddings for the citizens of Rutherford County and other areas around Rutherford County. The unique character and the quality of the caves gave it a wonderful spot for people to come enjoy and have a festive day relative to that opportunity for their lives to be changed. But this property offered an opportunity for them to open it up and have it as an opportunity for people to come and use it to have a, 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 a unique situation in regards to photography, but also wedding venues on that side. So that was the reason why they went through and constructed the building um, on that side. So that's kind of just a little bit of synopsis on, on the property itself and more or less the reasons why they kind of went through that. Um, we are also providing with the plan, uh, as you can see, the property is heavily wooded. Um, as you can see, the property actually slopes uphill going from the vent, from the barn itself and heading towards the southern portion of the property. That is a knoll. Um, so all the water does come down that. So that's why we talked about the stormwater. But most and everything that's out there that's treated today will be roughed in that form or fashion because they don't want to change the character of the property. They want it to stay maintained as the forested property that it is, so it provides for the unique character of the property for those weddings and or photography sessions that can be used on the property on that side. So as part of that, we will also then be including some buffering uh, to help mitigate with the properties that are to the north that are actually butt up against where their houses face on that side. So we're putting some buffering buffering in there, but we'll also be putting in some buffering along that southeastern side or that lower right side. They'll be interlacing that through the existing vegetation to help dense up a little portion of that property that may be a little thin at this point in time. Uh, along with that, we'll be also providing um, evergreen shrubs and such along the frontage of Saddle Drive to help with mitigation of traffic, you know, headlights and such as people come and go from those events on that side. Um, you'll be looking at this in regards to events having to end at 10 o'clock as, as written in the pattern book on that side. So if there is a wedding, the latest hour of operation would be 10 o'clock on that side. So we may certainly outline those just like other event venues that have come through, like the Maccas in regards to their event venue last year, making certain that we're setting hours of operation that are not exceedingly too late in the evening so that we are not disturbing the surrounding properties on that side. Um, I think with that, I've pretty much kind of gone through the idea of what they want to do with the property. Um, I'm here for any questions now or after public hearing. With the uh, fire access that we just discussed and the potential for that main entrance, you're talking about improvements to that main entrance. Is that what we're, what I heard? No, right now the main entrance is just a, it's an asphalt driveway that leads up to the residence that's in, it's laced in the middle of those magnolias. So we'll be leaving that as is. The improvement will be to the entrance off a saddle so that we have the operational standards for any fire vehicle or emergency vehicle to be able to get in there without it them being stuck at any point in time. So that little Y-shaped configuration that you see on the plan, that's all paved asphalt which will meet the standards for you know, compaction and such for that from the standpoint of being able to be load bearing for a fire truck to pull in there on that side and be able to then move in and then be able to back in and out and get out back out to, out to saddle on that side. Okay, so, so my follow-up question to that is this is self-proclaimed as a macro wedding event as a new term to me too, which is greater than 50. Mm -hmm. 
I only count 30 parking spaces. So what do you think is going to happen that everybody tries to fit somewhere and they block where a fire truck needs to get into 97 people with another, how, who knows how many standing outside the building? I just think it's a recipe for disaster there. Well, the, for, for what I'm looking at here initially. So I just, I'm concerned about the number of parking spaces provided. If we say two guests ride together, that's 25 vehicles doing the simple math. I can, I can at least do that part. And that's barely enough to cover even more. So mm -hmm. we don't know how many more. If you get up to 100, you're talking about 50 spaces that are needed. They're likely going to park and block things. I mean, that's just a concern that I have. And then that's one of many, but I'll get to the others later. No, that's fine. I understand your point there on, on that side. The um, the parking code, as you see on the concept plan on page eight, the parking code for this type of event venue is one space for every three guests. So that's where the math mathematician of the 32 spaces is c conceived at that point in time. Um, there is more room on the property to us to looking at more spaces on that side to evolve on that side. You know, the the idea that is, you know, and I understood the point earlier in regards to your question about people outside the building, not so much the occupancy load on that. You know. The idea of these micro macro type of events on that side is that you know you're not going to want to have people loitering outside. You know, having more people there than you have occupancy for because if it does, it is it, you know weddings aren't always on rainy and sunny days. There are rainy days on that side. Birthday parties the same thing. So those people wouldn't want to be standing outside the building on that side. So the idea of the weddings and birthday parties and such that may use this space is to keep them under that occupancy low because they don't want to have extra people standing outside that they technically by by code cannot support inside the structure so if we you know, if we went above and beyond what's supported by the floor plan then you'd have the opportunity for people then being stuck outside the building because you technically can't force them inside the building because it's over the occupancy level on that side so that's kind of where the mancusos want to get that's they understand there's gonna be a cap to this and they don't they're not going to exceed that cap in regards to people coming to the venue for that event but then the sunshiny days or the spring days that someone's having an event there, how do you make somebody go inside? I mean, they, they're going to wander mm -hmm. around the property if it's as picturesque as mm -hmm. it's made yeah. out to be. I mean, there's no controls that I know of to make sure everybody stay in the building. You know, I mean, that's that's, that's stretching it a little bit, I think. So, I mean, but, but I'm just trying to give it a fair look. I'm just trying to think of things that, especially with the neighbors being this close. So um, you, you start, I know that one of the complaints had outdoor music associated mm -hmm. with it. And I am hypersensitive to that because I live very close to one, well, close. I'm all just under a mile away from an event venue that's outdoors and it is quite intrusive. Mm -hmm. And so any outdoor venue to me, just as important as a traffic study plan, a lighting plan, or a drainage plan, needs to have a noise abatement plan. Because mm -hmm. I want to know the decibels, especially with those houses being 300 feet from that venue. I just, I, I'm real sensitive to somebody being encroached on with noise. And we did get a traffic study, I mean, sorry, a sound study turned over to Doug this morning on that side that was done last week on that side because we knew this would be a question that would come up. Um, that, that sound study was handed over to Mike. The decibel readings on that with the anticipation of the sound system that they have inside the building right now did not exceed the county requirements for decibels at the property line. If you read through that study, did you put that up on, the, um, on their stuff, Doug, for them to look through? Or oh, it's, it's uh, Mike. Can you pull it up? Okay. I'm not sure if I put it. I don't remember if I put it on the iPad. Or not. It's on your iPad. It's on, okay, it is on the iPad. I moved. I put so much stuff Austin, on here early. I can't remember what I did. Audio. Yes. Inside. So in regards to the conclusions in that study on that side and the back side, the next couple pages kind of gives you a couple different uh, measurements in regards to where they did the measurement in regards to the front neighboring property edge. So that would be the properties on the north side. You have the left property edge, and you also have the right property edge. So it kind of gives you an idea in regards to that. They did three different measurements in, both in all, all three locations on that. So the first one is a measurement with no music and light traffic in the background. This was then, of course, taken at a measurement time of 5.02 p.m. on that side. So you can see that the maximum level of decibels with no music playing on that location was at 60 decibels. 
The next line down on that you can see is the second measurement was with music. So again, background noise at five at 519, that came back at 54.6 decibels. So background noise lowered and with the music playing, it did not go above and beyond background noise in regards to the system that they have on the property today on that side. And then again, going to the third measurement under the first one there, you can see that that's no music and light traffic and that was recorded at five o'clock. That then shows again the maximum level of decibels and that was at 59 and that's with no music playing. So that's the background noise you heard in regards to putting that, sp that sensor at the northern property line in the property that sits up against the back of those neighbors on that side. Left property side there, again, you can see maximum level with no, with no music, light traffic at five o'clock was at 60 decibels. The second measurement on this here actually goes to 71 decibels, but that was because of a jet airplane or some kind of airplane had gone over the property at that point in time when they were doing that study. That's with music, light traffic, and of course the plane going overhead that you had a maximum decibel level of 70 decibels at that point in time at five o'clock in the afternoon third one there you can see it kind of drops back down so you can see through that on that side but you can see in regards to the conclusions on that on the front page that it will not exceed 50 decibels which keeps it under the standards in regards to the property so forgive me for missing this document i would have read this a little more closely but um this was recorded during an actual event no, they simulated an event in regards oh. to that on that side. So it was yeah. not recorded during an actual event on that side. Okay. So the sound engineer that went to the property, they put the music system on so that you can hear what it would sound like at those three they, locations on that side. They turned it on. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. If I yeah. can interject something into so. the discussion real quick. Again, we just got this late this morning. You know, we really haven't had a whole, a whole lot of time yes. to digest this. Uh, might go back to the top if you don't mind. Um, just looking at this and some of the questions I had, and again, just with just with not a whole lot of time to, to really look at this, it talks about the. Uh, where did I read that? It talks about the volume levels and different things about music being turned all the way up. I mean, I have no idea what kind of system. It doesn't go into any details because what kind of system they used or anything. I mean, there's. I just have a lot of questions about this, and like I said, we just haven't had a chance to really. Uh, uh, to really get into the study of that whole lot just because we just got it earlier today. So I just wanted to make that statement. Other questions? Commissioner? You was going so quick, I missed the hours of operation. What, what, what's the hours of operation? On page nine of the booklet on that side there, it says that uh, under bullet number, let's see, bullet number two hours of operations for events shall be limited from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Events will be held on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Events shall be appointment or reservation only on that side. Now this also then ties into the home-based business that they already have approved on the property on that side, so that'd be the photography sessions, but this would be more geared towards like weddings, birthday parties, bigger events where you're not having a small group of people coming for photography. This is more for who will be using the event venue in regards to that, in regards to operations from 8 to 10 on that side. You know, looking at it from, I guess, from the neighbor's perspectives out there from what I'm just seeing, been bombarded with emails, I guess the rest of this bunch has too. The uh, question of 8 to 10, does that mean we're cleaned up, everybody's gone at 10 o'clock, or is that just cut off time and then we got to clean up and haul off? That'd be clear. Everybody's cleaned up and out the door. Everybody's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let me ask you this. On the design of the traffic coming out on Saddle Drive, is it designed to send it? Is, is the hopes that they'll leave and head back toward Murfreesboro on Saddle Drive? Well, I mean, it depends on who your who your who your people are that are coming to the events on that side. Saddle does provide you an opportunity to turn left to go back to East Compton, and then from East Compton, East Compton is currently I would classify and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would classify that as a collector road in some regards. So that is a collector road that provides connectivity between Las Casas and all the way back to Halls Hill, either via East Compton itself, and there's a. 
another street that brings it back, but more or less it is a collector road that provides a good amount of movement of traffic in this northeast quadrant of the county to get back and forth. So the idea, the premise is that people can get to Saddle, they can disperse to the right, which would take Saddle back around the hill, going back over top the hill, past the CUD water tanks, past Twin Knobs subdivision, and back out to Las Casas, or taking a left and going back to East Compton, which would then take you to either Las Casas or take you back out towards Hallsill Pike in that direction. So it's providing an opportunity for traffic to kind of disperse in three different ways on that side. And again, most people use, you know, either they're, they're used to the area or they're using Google or Waze or whatever it is to move around so they'll get their directions based off of that and, and on our technology that we have today. Yeah, I, was, I just I wanted to point out something. If they go left, they're going to hit Compton, and I'm glad you pointed out it's a pretty busy section there going back up and down Compton Road. I know there's a blind spot out there as you pull out on Compton. But the bigger thing that I notice is if you pull up to the stop sign, you're not going to accommodate many cars before everybody's got to go right if I get tied up that traffic because there's not put a house and a half property in half there. Right. So I don't know that it's going to be a good outlet to head back to Compton. Just my thought. I think they're going to use saddle if they pull out that way. Okay. Commissioners, other questions for the applicant? I, I do just want to say real quick, I really appreciate you sincerely answering the questions for that. I'm just trying to get a sense of what everything's like out there and just try to make a, the best decision we can. So just, no, I just want to make sure. I'm here for clarity no, okay. for you all on that side. Yeah. I'm here to answer so any questions. I really questions. appreciate you doing that. No, that's not a problem. I said it's a, it's a unique piece of property. I think it's something that, you know, is a is a potential jewel to this community in regards to the opportunity for providing a place that not only can you come for a wedding, but I think from the standpoint of they saw the importance of it from a photography session standpoint that people can come for graduation pictures. They can come for any kind of like picture they want on that property. And right now this time of the year with the leaves greening out, it's a beautiful location for pictures on that side. And I think you'll hear some of that talk tonight from some of the residents that are coming to support this on that side. And even some of the local small business Business owners you'll hear from tonight that are a part of this property when it comes to these opportunities for business in regards to florists and everything else that would go into doing these small venue weddings and stuff like that on that side so you'll hear you'll probably hear that tonight from some of the residents that are here to speak for it so if there's no okay one more uh, thank you and this uh, question may be for Miss Bale but on page 14 of the book that I have it as venue distance to residential homes and uh, Compton Cave looks like it's 300 feet, um, Copper Ridge 60 feet, John Haven Farm 170 feet, um, Hackney about 770 feet, uh, Riverside Retreat 270. On 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 these locations that's in the county. Um, do you get quite a bit of, if any, noise complaints? Going down through this list, Riverside was literally just approved. Um, I don't even know if they've had any events. Um, if they have, it's been very, very few. Hackney Wedding Venue, I have not heard anything. Uh, Carriage Lane is in the city. John Haven Farm, I'm not even familiar with that one. I've never heard of that one. And Copper Ridge, um, I understand, has very, very few events, and I do not get noise complaints with that. So basically no noise complaints on these, any of these other venues? Not from any of these, okay, no. thank, okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just uh, before you open the public hearing, not for you, Rob, you can go. Uh, on, the, on your iPads, I did want to make mention, of course, uh, we've received uh, a lot of emails, phone calls, and things for this. I did uh, kind of print PDFs of all the different emails that we have. It is on your, um, yeah, on your iPads for you to look at. I think there's about 23, 25, somewhere in that neighborhood. Not all of them are uh, there most of them are, are for support there are a few in there that are in opposition but I just wanted to point that out to you that that is on the iPads for your perusal okay we'll then uh, move now into our public hearing I'll call the public hearing to order 
It's the same process that we have followed for the other two. Now let me, I didn't say this at the last one, but if there's anyone who feels they cannot stand up here, um, we'll give you the opportunity to stay where you are and come up at, at that time. If you'll just let us know you want to do that. We'll let you start lining up up here. And I see that Mr. John is first already. I have already spoke to this gentleman right here. He was responsible for the materials you have on your desk. He's also responsible, I think, for the petition that we have received here. I'm going to ask that the individuals who maybe have signed this petition to please stand at this time. And Mr. John is going to be speaking for you, I understand. Yes. And he, I have given him extra time. Thank you. My name is John Dudenitz and I live on the corner of Compton Road and Saddle Drive with my wife, Carol. We've lived there for 42 years. Uh, never had an issue with anything, noise, nothing. And let me skip ahead a little bit here. Um, did, did everybody get a letter from me that explained the history? Okay, thank you. So we're, we're set there. Uh, we're here along with the folks that were standing and signed a petition to ask that you deny this request based on three primary issues. Safety, noise, which has been documented to the tune of a sheriff coming out and shutting down the venue and also just the inappropriateness of the venue. We're not saying it isn't a good idea, don't misunderstand. It's a beautiful chunk of property and I'm sure it brings in a lot of money for those guys that sell flowers and whatever and the photographers, but it just doesn't fit and the primary reason for the non-fit has not been mentioned in the SEC report at all that I can find and that is, if you open tab one please, You will see, and can you pull up 1880? Thanks. If you look around the center of the page, there's a black arrow that points to the venue in question, 594 feet above sea level. Look about two inches above it, you'll see 574 feet. 20 foot variance. How are you gonna stop that noise? is the question. You gotta have 20 feet going in just to break even with the building, and then what are you gonna have, about 10 feet above that? 30 feet, really nice. The problem with that noise measurement, frankly, looking at the, um, at the Rutherford County Code, which I have here if you like to see it, the placement for the meter is five feet above ground. The noise source is 20 feet above ground. So the validity of that, and I'm sure it was unintentional, is just not there. Plus the frequency differentials mentioned requires a spectrum analyzer, in my view, to really be accurate, and there isn't any weight scale, meaning C or A, which is uh, used in acoustics to measure the decibelic level, is not mentioned in that report, to my knowledge, it certainly isn't mentioned in the code. Um, so let me address on that end safety, please. Um, if you look at your map and see if this laser works. I'm sorry guys, in the audience, we can't uh, show anything. But folks, if you look at the exit on the Saddle Drive, you'll see a, a kind of a grayish area there. The, the folks that exit will turn left and they come to the stop sign that was mentioned and accurately the gentleman here who stole my thunder, but that's okay. Uh, there's a rise to the east of that and I call it a blind rise because you can't see the car coming until it's almost over that rise. So it, there's gonna be a backup of vehicles here. And when the folks trying to get out can't by turning left, they're gonna turn right. So if you open 
tab two, you'll see saddle drive. Can you pull up the entirety of saddle drive? If, if not, you can see how saddle drive has a serpentine drive all the way from Compton Road to 96. Hilly, blind curves at night, and I drove it last night to see if there were any lighting in that area. There isn't anything. So that's gonna be a problem, I'm convinced. And also during the day, if they have an event, that area, be it right or wrong, has been used since I've been living there by MTSU, Cumberland, high schools, the folks in the area, running teams, just enjoying walking, and that's gonna be a problem if the traffic density becomes an issue. So with that, let's go into the noise issue, which was addressed. And if you would please remember the differential of 20 feet. If you take a look at tab three, and also just look at the, 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 the closeness, the proximity to the areas of the homes on Saddle Drive. And by the way, when they pull out of Saddle Drive, or when they pull onto Saddle Drive, their headlights are gonna shine into these folks' living room, and that's a given it has already done that. So if you take a look at um, the, the Betty Ford Road area, and that is the uh, Copper Ridge area, the building is kind of like near the 59 number down there. And there is a black arrow pointing toward a building. That building is not a house. That's a barn. So the 60 foot number, thank you. So the 60 foot number is invalid and I spoke with the owner of that barn and we have pictures to support it. It is in fact a barn, not a house. And then if you turn to four, this is a picture of, uh, I call it Riverside. I, I hope it's the right, right thing. It's, it's right at 522. Oh, also notice the, ele uh, the elevation. There is no difference between that venue and the adjacent property. No difference in elevation between the Jefferson Pike item. In addition, if you look at the edge and the photos that's in the pocket of the front cover, you'll see that's high density shrubbery in that area. And there's a fence along that perimeter as well to block any uh, noise or headlight shining. And that fence height is seven feet, 11 inches. There's about three feet more to the high density shrubbery. You look at the other picture, that's Compton Caves and that's pretty well void. And unless there is some kind of special fertilizer out there that I don't know about, it's gonna take a long time for any shrubbery that they put in there to grow enough to be effective. So in the meantime, noise remains an issue primarily because of the 90 foot differential. And that's huge. I mean the 90 foot differential, I'm sorry. The uh, 20 foot differential. Mr. So, John, you need to be closed it out. We've okay, already, buddy, okay, we've gone thank past you. past your agreed upon okay, time. Okay, sorry, all right. Um, let me see. I got the safety issue covered. Uh, we've got the history covered. The lack of fit, I think, speaks for itself. Um, it just doesn't go. We're not saying it isn't, isn't nice, but it doesn't go. Also mentioned in there is this issue about um, self-managing, which I don't know about. If you turn to tab five, in the meeting that we had that was referenced 28th of uh, February, the number of events mentioned were 20 to 30. If you look at this tab five, while we rock 2023, 501 photography sessions, elopements, weddings, etc. That's a little bit more than 30. So I don't understand how that's gonna work if it's self-managed. So I guess I'll, uh, I appreciate the extra time 
Um, and if you have any questions of me, I, I guess I'll cut it short there to give these folks a time to speak. Um, do you have any questions of me or will that come later? Thank you, sir. No, we, we don't do questions and answers gotcha. during the public hearing. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Next. Your name and address. My name's Craig Nelson, live at 1666 Saddle Drive. Um, I've lived in the neighborhood for quite a while now. Love it, it's nice and quiet. Uh, and I'm just, I'm not sure yet uh, if the venue actually sells alcohol or not. Uh, but selling alcohol into a residential neighborhood can significantly impact the safety and well-being of our community, especially if there are children present, which we have a ton in our, in our uh, neighborhood. Uh, Alcohol-related establishments can attract disrupt disruptive behavior, include loud, uh, loud patrons, potential fights, increased traffic late at night, which can disturb the peace of the neighborhood and pose safety risks for residents, including children. Additionally, presence of the alcohol in the neighborhood may raise concern, uh, may, raise, may raise concern under, for underage drinking, maybe, you know, and the negative perception on the area. Overall, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, also leading to you know uh, the potential for and I'm sorry I lost my place I apologize um, well taking down the neighbor like you know uh, making making our neighborhood less attractive as well so uh, I'm opposed to this uh, I have three small children as well they're, they're growing up but you know and then my neighbors do as well and I just don't think it's you know potentially a good fit for our neighborhood uh, for this so thank you for your time thank you for listening thank you next Good evening. My name is Molly Slayball. I reside at 511 North Maple Street here in Murfreesboro. I own Mary Me of Tennessee. I'm a small wedding venue in downtown Murfreesboro on West Lytle Street. I also offer off-site wedding officiant services. I have been to Compton Caves a number of times, and I'm gonna advocate for our small business owner. They are not the only business on East Compton Road. We've got Valley Growers Nursery on the corner, Caddy Corner to their driveway. So it's not like they're the only business bringing traffic into the area. On the numerous occasions that I've been to their lovely venue, it's been the micro weddings, 20 people or less, there's been no outside DJs, no outside vendors, there's no hair and makeup people, no tent, chairs, delivery people, no outside caterers. The sound system is maybe this tall, this wide, with the sound of the waterfall in the background. You do well to hear me speak at the end of the chair rail system. I'm not sure where the noise complaints are coming from. The Mancusos go out of their way to accommodate. I've never been inside of the barn, but the last occasion that I had a wedding, it was pouring rain. Mrs. Mancuso went out of her way to set up the elopement under the covered patio, and this couple had come from California and Texas, and the picturesque landscape of the waterfall, the whole serene nature was such that we did their elopement by the cave in the pouring down rain. The photographer coated her camera in a baggie and we went forth. So I guess my whole point, parking was not a problem, traffic was not a problem, outside vendors was not a problem, noise level was not a problem. They're not the only commercial business in the area. Consider supporting our small business people and give them a chance. If not for the 97 people, let them continue their photography and the micro elopement. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Thank you, Chairman and staff. Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to be able to speak. 
My name is Cody Wilson. I live at 2025 East Compton Road. I come before you to voice my opposition to the rezoning of 1880 East Compton Road from a medium density residential to a planned unit development. The Mancusos are entrepreneurs. I am one myself. I enjoy seeing people creating and thri creating thriving bit companies. Some of the best products and services in Rutherford County come from small businesses. Uh, I have no problem with someone wanting to use their property to establish a small business, but as an owner of a small business, you have to be respectful of the people around you who will be affected. Have the Manco Mancusos shown this respect to us? I don't think so. I have been in the fire service for 20 years. I'm currently a battalion chief at a local fire department and I've spent several years in codes enforcement. I have firsthand knowledge of why there are checks and balances within local government. These rules and regulations are important because they protect citizens of Rutherford County from a myriad of negative consequences that could arise from allowing people and businesses to act as they please. I take my government position seriously because all of my actions and inactions can and will have an impact on the very persons I swore to protect. I'm looking to you now for protection of my family's residence and way of life. Like I said before, I have no problem with small businesses, but the biggest key to being successful in small business is being trustworthy. At the first meeting, the Mancusos spoke of collaboration between neighbors and themselves on this project, and that hasn't happened. Rules that the Rutherford County government has set for this property and business have not been followed, which makes a, uh, for a mockery of this system. There have even been rumors of the Mancusos expressing that they will blatantly ignore the decision of this committee and will continue with their plans. Tonight, I ask that you use your good judgment to ensure the checks and balances set within this county are not treated as a joke or merely a guideline. As a result, my family and neighbor's way of life will be protected, and for that, we'll be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Hello, I'm Allie Elliott Boyce. <laughs> my maiden name, sorry. <laughs> I live at 3105 Field Road, and that's on the corner of Field and Saddle. Um, I've lived there for seven years, um, and I just wanna take a few moments to share the perspective of the young families in our neighborhood. Um, I'm speaking for about five of the families, but there are many more. When you turn down Saddle Drive, you may feel as though you step back in time a few decades. It's not uncommon to see kids running down the street barefoot or playing in the water hose for hours on end. You'll undoubtedly see a couple of dads playing ball with their children in the front yard. In the warmer months, it's practically an evening ritual to stroll up and down the street, catching up with everyone usually at the end of the driveway or right there in the street. Cars typically stop to say hi and catch up with friends. Kids stay up way past bedtime to catch lightning bugs and play tag. The point I'm trying to make is that this peaceful neighborhood is our Eden, or for any Andy Griffith fans, our very own Mayberry. The houses aren't huge, they aren't up to date, there's no state of the art community pool, there's no dog park or playground like so many new neighborhoods have, but in Two Hills subdivision we have something that money can't buy, and that is a slow paced community that gives you a warm nostalgic feeling just driving down the road. In this neighborhood, I'm able to give my two boys the childhood that I had, the one that you likely had too, a childhood that is becoming increasingly rare. Opening a business threatens the paradise we call home. While I do feel heartbroken for the residents at the top of the hill who are dealing with noise and light, the truth is those issues won't affect us down the hill. The increased traffic, however, will. There are only two ways out of our neighborhood, and inevitably, when the proposed exit onto Compton becomes congested, drivers will be coming our way. This will substantially decrease the safety of our little slice of heaven. If you deny this petition for rezoning, it will only negatively affect one household on our street. If you, excuse me, if it is approved, it will negatively affect roughly 35 households on Saddle Drive alone. So from all of the families along Saddle Drive, please deny this request for rezoning. Thank you. Next.
1706 Saddle Drive. Uh, my name is Seth Rollins. Uh, I've had the joy of calling the Two Hills community home for the last 30 years of my life. Uh, I felt called to speak some words from my heart on the matter at hand due to the unique perspective I possess uh, because I grew up here as a child and I chose to return and make my life here as an adult. Someone who doesn't know me well would be taken aback to know I work in Nashville and I travel often for work. I know what you're thinking. Why would I choose to expose myself to over two hours of a daily commute through I-24 that's on fire, either rain, sleet, snow, or shine? And I have to tell you, it's the Two Hills community. It's what Allie mentioned. It's the, si the quiet sounds of nature's orchestra in the evenings when you get home from a tiring day in the hubbub of the city. It's the laughter of runners resting on the road after training on our hills through high schools or colleges and just going out and meeting coaches. It's conversations with our neighbors through the fences. And when you hear the joys of children giggling as they're biking and scootering up and down the roads at night with their families, it's something that's just inspiring to the old ways of life. That's why I chose to call Murfreesboro home. And that is our Two Hills community. Now I understand that when a prospector finds a gym, they wanna sell it to others. But Two Hills is our own slice of somewhere unique in time. Friendly neighbors, clean streets, and the sounds of families growing up together. It's not the sounds of late night traffic and the image of our children picking up litter from their yards. Margaret Wheatley says there's no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. I hope this committee can see the self-evident nature of what the Two Hills community cares about. It's safety, it's nature, and it's families. My ask as a humble citizen of this community is that you help us protect our way of life by denying this addition of a venue in the midst of our homes. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening. Uh, my name is Taylor Sanders. I currently live at 1632 Allwood Avenue. Um, however, I am the heir, or one of the heirs, the one of three, and the other two are in this room, of 2025 East Compton Road, where I live for the first 15 years of my life with my family. This property is located directly north of the proposed event venue. Tonight, I'm opposing the proposed wedding and event venue switching to a PUD due to its potential impacts on the environment and neighboring properties. The cave located at the proposed event venue houses an all-weather spring, as well as different species of animals, bats, spiders, snakes, which are illegal to kill in the state of Tennessee. This spring also currently provides 2025 East Compton Road, my family's property, farm, with fresh water for agriculture use. This farm has been working since the late 1800s. I am a sixth generation on this property. This spring also feeds an unnamed, unnamed tributary to the Stones River as well. We know how sensitive Stones River is right now. The proposed event venue has many potential unknown impacts of stormwater runoff onto neighboring properties and the tributary. If the proposed venue is allowed, careful design and maintenance of stormwater pollution prevention measures would need to be in place to mitigate the effects on neighboring properties, which have not been provided on the agenda or proposed rezoning plan set. Compton Caves have shown through their past violations of this Planning Commission's guidelines, they do not respect their community. Therefore, I and other community members are concerned that they will not properly implement and maintain these stormwater pollution prevention plans. In addition to the impact of the tributary, the proposed event venue could drastically change the floodplain of the three homes directly northwest of Compton Caves. I have seen all three properties have large amounts of standing water in their front yards. The added impervious material proposed around the event venue will increase the runoff to potential detrimental state and could lead to home floodings. 
Even if the storm water is routed to Saddle Drive, this will still cause issue because the event venue is the highest point in the area and will ultimately drain to Compton Road. The runoff will still end up in the front yards of the homes of Com and to the northwest of Compton Caves, which is the lowest elevation before going into the tributary. This proposed event center is not just impacting the now, it is impacting the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Jack Sanders. You heard from two of my children. Third one's here. I'm the fifth, fifth generation to live at this location at 2025 East Compton Road. How did the Compton community come to be? When I was a child, Compton Road was a gravel road. I had two houses that I could see from my front porch. Then the neighbors showed up. Neighbors became friends. Friends became family. And the community of Compton was created. If this was a new development and it was put on the table before you all have to approve would be one thing. This is an established residential commercial that is wanting to have a change in the way this community lives. I kind of look at it like putting a square peg in a round hole. It don't fit. On the proposal that was presented on page four, there's a reference to a traffic reference, a reference a Rutherford County long range transportation plan says Compton Road is slated for to be improved. July the 24th, 2003, that's 21 years ago, and Compton Road has not been improved. You all have been exposed to the concerns of the traffic tonight, where, where, where it's all gonna end up. We talked about 97 people in a 40 by 60 building with a torrential downpour that we do have no control over. You all do have control over this. Listed was 50 events a year. A year. There's 52 months in a year. This is going to be proposed for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That means that my neighbors, my family, my friend are going to be, could be exposed to 156 events a year. And this is during a time that we come together and we have the right to relax on our property, enjoy the nature and the creativity, the environment of our community and make memories with our families. Free from all these issues identified, This is a residential community, one of friends, neighbors, and families, a community that has voiced our concerns of this proposal going forward, and it needs to be rejected. We humbly and respectfully ask that you deny this PUD request, the residents of the Compton community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next. Good evening. My name is Brad Rainier. I live at 4807 Kingdom Drive in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, I'm here tonight speaking in support of Compton Caves. Uh, I've been friends with the Mancusos for 20 plus years, have been on their property numerous times, uh, just hanging out. And you know, we've also attended birthday parties. Uh, I have my daughter's senior pictures taken there and I'll actually be hosting my daughter's graduation party there next month at the venue. Uh, the Mancusas have never charged me or anyone that hosted any event I have attended a penny for utilizing their property. They truly do it because they care and because they want to share this beautiful piece of property with everyone. Um, I'm very surprised at the opposition of utilizing this property as an event space. Uh, you know, can you guess where the neighborhood meeting was allowed by staff, neighbors, and the commissioner? 
It, guess what, it was at Compton Caves. Um, it's funny how it's okay to use the place when it benefits certain individuals for an event. Um, the the Mancusas have hired the SEC to make sure all the rules and regulations are met or exceeded. As you can see in the agenda, they did have a couple of weddings they weren't supposed to in the middle of last year. For those events, they did receive a letter from staff and they haven't had any events for profit since. I know there were also some concerns about the website. The website screenshots in the book are from 2022. We're talking two years ago. At no point could you ever book any event of any kind through the website. I know there were some concerns of that earlier. Um, <clears throat> one other thing I wanted to mention uh, in regards to the opposition that spoke, uh, the first gentleman that was up here, he mentioned that there was police presence at the property. Um, Doug, I, I believe there was a document submitted by uh, one of our uh, people that are supporting here that actually shows uh, that there was no police presence at the property or has ever been. Do you have that? Can you pull that up for me? I don't have it to pull up, but you're correct. We did receive something, I think, from the applicant. Perfect. I just wanted to make that very clear. I'm, you know, kind of concerned with the integrity of people speaking when, unfortunately, the facts that they're speaking of are not accurate. Um, getting back to um, the website, at no point could you ever book any event of any kind through the website. If you take a look at the website currently, it has been updated due to the concern brought to the planning department. Uh, the Mancuso's took the feedback, they made the corrections. Bookings were only taken for photographer sessions, which they are allowed to do under the minor at home business application the staff approved on January of 2023. Another thing I wanted to bring up was the family wanting to do right by their neighbors. They have planted over 12 evergreens along the Saddle Drive side of their property in response to neighbors' concern of their borrowed view being changed. They're prepared to do whatever it takes to do the right thing and make this venue successful. In closing, I feel we need to stop living in the past on this project and make a decision based on the applicable standards of review within the land use code. Thank you for your time. Next. My name is Brandon Lang. I live at 109 Gibstone Court in Las Casas, Tennessee. Uh, I've lived in the Compton area for 15 years. Um, and I actually feel like I have a pretty unique position because I'm within eyesight of the John Haven Farm venue, which is on Valley View Road just behind my property. Um, I've never been impacted negatively by that. that uh, um, Mr. Piercy, who I believe owns that property, runs the general merchandise store in Las Casas. I see him all the time. Um, and I would be sure to tell him in person if I had any issues with his property. So I do not. Um, no traffic, no noise. Uh, I can see it. Uh, I heard some of the passionate opposition earlier saying that elevation was a concern. Uh, the John Haven Farm is elevated from my property as well. Um, so uh, I feel like if they were to have a, a big gathering, which I'm sure that they have uh, in the many years that they've operated, I would certainly have been impacted negatively by that. Uh, I have two small children and uh, they have early bedtime. So uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't want any negative impacts in, in that regard. Um, I've also been made aware of some concerns about property values. Um, Las Casas is, is a growing community. Uh, our property values out there are solid. And year over year, I've, I've had a return uh, in equity on that as well. Um, I believe Mr. Rainier covered the, uh, the no events, no police uh, records for uh, the Mancusos and, and their, their uh, event venue at Compton Caves. Uh, I have personal friends with uh, the Mancusos. I can tell you they're great people. Um, they want to do right by the community. Uh, it is a beautiful property and I feel like, um, you know, not giving the community the opportunity to experience it for themselves and use it as a, a vehicle um, to be able to enjoy it. It's, I mean, the caves are beautiful. The, the, the landscape is beautiful. It's, it's picture, picturesque. Uh, I've had photography taken out there, of course, free of charge. Um, I've had uh, events out there as well. Uh, my girls love to go out there and play and get in the water of the caves. Um, another concern I just heard standing up here was about the tributaries uh, that, that feed into the Stones River, which that may be true, um, but I think our bigger concern, and maybe I missed this, this meeting and probably should be more involved, uh, I think the landfill is probably the biggest concern, right? I don't think a wedding venue is going to be uh, that big of an uh, impact uh, negatively to the Stones River. Um, and traffic, I, you know, my girls are in sports and I cross through that intersection at Compton and Thompson, uh, sorry, at Compton in 96, um, multiple times a day, uh, many times to the grocery store, taking them back and forth to the, to McKnight ballpark, wherever it is. Right. Um, and there's no traffic issues there. There's multiple ways. That's, that's the great part of that side of town. In my opinion, is that there's multiple venue or avenues to get to and from, uh, Murfreesboro, uh, proper. And so, um, that, that being said, oh, thank you for your time.
Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Mindy Stover, and my address is 2063 Kennedy Creek Road in Auburn Town. Um, I have lived in Wilson County for the last two and a half years, but I've lived in uh, Rutherford County for 25 years, and um, including I am the previous owner with my husband of Riverside. And actually, the elevation of that property is 592. So, um, and my husband and I had several events, private of course, because we weren't a business. We also had two weddings at our property. And I believe that Compton Caves um, is a perfect area for a wedding. I say that because I am a professional florist and I have done a photo shoot, which the Mancusos did not even charge me for using their property. They are so gracious in every which way. And I do have to say, um, I brought up some points. Um, if I can get my phone open, sorry. <laughs> um, I have been in the wedding industry um, with both macro and micro weddings. Um, is basically the pattern of people leaving. I know that street traffic is huge. Um, I also, being in Auburn Town, I go to Murfreesboro countless times and as a florist make countless deliveries and weddings and um, I've never had any issue with traffic as far as leaving a venue, it's always broken up. It's not like a ballpark. You won't find a sports, you know, a sports game, everyone leaves at once. At a wedding, everyone leaves differently. And trust me, I've spent countless hours at wedding venues. And I say that because I've also spent countless hours at wedding venues that are barns and in residential neighborhoods, I've never witnessed any issue with music, any neighboring complaints. Um, I mean, like I said, I gave my heart to Riverside. I'm proud of Mechavella that they became a, a wedding venue. And I know the Roanoke subdivision gave them a hard time, but like the Compton Caves, small business is where it's at. And without us, what are we? I mean, we're all eventually small business. My husband had a small business 25 years ago and now it's one of the largest in the country. And that's how we all start out. And I know the Mancusos, I've known Brandon for a very, very long time. And I can tell you this is all with their heart and that's it. They just want a better, more successful life for their child, for their family. And I also have sev several memories of the house. My, when my mom lived here, actually the previous owners, there used to be a hole in the kitchen where they would allow the cool air to come up. And that was like the thing to do. So this house has so much history. And as a florist, I just want to save it for, <laughs> um, I want everyone to experience it. Y'all need to go there and check it out. Thank you so much. Next. Well, I brought my, make sure I get my three minutes, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. There's a clock right here. Uh, my name's Terry Spence. I live at 1646 Saddle Drive. Um, I've lived in this town, I'm a police officer. I've been here 38 years protecting cities, the county, county roads. And I said, now I feel like I'm having to fight on a Monday night to protect my neighborhood, a place that I've lived for 32 years. My wife raised my kids and everything I've heard, I've heard a bunch of stuff tonight that's gone on and even learned more tonight about things. And the bottom line is the Mancusos may not be bad people and, and I never have met him before. And I'll say that again, I have never met him before. He's never come to my house and asked, hey, do you mind I have a wedding venue? Nobody's ever said that. I raised bees in, in this town. Before I got my bees, I asked my neighbor next to me, hey, would you mind if I had some bees? No, I think that's great, thank you. If you didn't, I wouldn't have them. But I asked him. Nobody's come and asked us anything. And so the fact that this is just about business, this is the fact that we've got a community in our neighborhood, Two Hill Subdivision, that is a gym. Just on the outskirts of town, but close enough that we can get milk, or we've got our kids to school or whatever. And I've raised my kids there. 
And the fact that we've got more traffic coming in, and I've even heard from 52 weeks, and so if you go ahead and divide all this stuff up, it's going to compute to about 15,000 cars a year coming back through there. And with that, we're going to have speeders, we're going to have crashes, we're going to have trash. I've already picked, I had my son, and we walked that hill, Two Hill Subdivision. I bet Mr. Macuso hasn't walked it and picked up beer cans and have to explain to a six and seven year old, what's this blue can? Bunch of blue cans up here. It's a Bud Light can's what it is, and you don't need to be involved in that. And I can say right now, my son's 21 years old, and he's not involved in that because we're involved in his life. And I wish somebody would have gotten involved in this with us and sent, come to our house and said, hey, we're going to have a venue. What do you think about that? Nobody has come to our house and done that. Nobody. So they don't care about the traffic. They don't care about the, the litter. They don't care about the speeders. They don't care about the drunks. They don't care about the crashes that are going to occur through here. Only thing they see is dollar signs. And that's fine. I'm all small, for small business. My wife's in small business. I get it. But the fact that nobody's come up and asked this right here, they've just come and they've just do their rules. They've got the cart in front of the horse. All this has been done, the violations you've heard, it's ridiculous. You know, it's just like the loud noise. How do they got to control that? It's just like a TCA code 59 or 559201 with the loud mufflers. We can't control that. How are they got to control the noise out there? When you get people that are at this wedding and they want to sit out here and say, we're going outside, we're opening the doors. They're going to. When they indulge in too much alcohol, they're going outside by a tree. They're going to pee because the bathroom's full. They can't control all that. But you as county commissioners can control by, by voting no for this. I've spoken to a lot of people in our neighborhood. I've still got 15 seconds. And we are still voting no on this. Everybody in our neighborhood, the majority of them have opposed this. And that's what we're going to do. And that's, we just ask that you just deny this. And thank you for your time. And my time's up now. Thank you, Terry. Next. Hi. I'm Terry Weatherly and I live at 862 Compton Road. I'm right down the road from the venue and I am really excited to see the passion that people have for children in this room. Um, I've noticed that the Mancuses have brought their child and subjected them to whatever is going on in this operation. I live on Compton Road back when, I've been there for 25 years, back when there were drunks using that road as a cutoff trying to get home. And we don't have that anymore. As developments have happened, we don't worry about leaving our home at night. We watch children walk up and down the road. I walk my dog. I'm a little fat, and she's, a, she's an amazing border collie, so she has to go at my speed. And it's wonderful. And a venue where people are celebrating weddings and first birthdays for children, graduations, that's what Murfreesboro is about. And I'm born and raised. I also drive two hours to get to Nashville and two hours to get home to try to cook a keto-friendly menu for my family so that we can thrive in this community. I will say that there is a beautiful new neighborhood where they're blasting right now. A lot more than 30 cars. There's also a medical facility that is being developed right down the road. That's going to have ambulances. It's going to have health care for some of the people in this room that will desperately need assistance. A lot more vehicles, and, and we're talking about a property as if it's already developed to its fullness. When what we're real, really looking at is an entrepreneur that's trying to establish a business. I hope that you vote to approve this opportunity and continue to help glorify the people and their families within Murfreesboro. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Melinda Mancuso. I live at 124 Rockingham Drive, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 37129. Yes, I am Brandon's mother. I'm not here, however, as a mama bear. I'm not here to do what has been done before as I watched this evening. I'm here instead speaking from the perspective as somebody who chose 30 years ago to make Rutherford County my home and as a retired Rutherford County school teacher. 
My family chose several years ago to make Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, our home. Likewise, Brandon and Danielle have done the same. They could have gone anywhere, and they chose to stay here. They set down roots in Rutherford County, and now they want to continue to be part of the growth of Rutherford County. And you and I both know Rutherford County is one of the fastest growing counties in the entire nation. They want to be a part of that. They want to be a part of the community by starting a small business. As a teacher, unfortunately, I watched some of our brightest and our best students leave Rutherford County over the years because they weren't given an opportunity to succeed. In fact, they were discouraged and ultimately they decided there's no place for me here and we lost them. Now, we have young people like Brandon and like Danielle. They want to be part of this exciting growth in Rutherford County. And it's up to each one of us guys to walk alongside them. Teach them, teach them how to do this. Celebrate their success because ultimately their success, guys, is our success. We need to be the voices to encourage them instead of discouraging them. Encourage them in their future because their future is our future. Instead of seeking ways to constantly argue, fight, discourage, and ultimately silence somebody's dreams. Their success will mean success to the county. It will, period, bottom line. I know they want to be good stewards of the land because I've seen them. I am not interested in plants or any of that, but I've watched my son and I've watched his wife work that land and continue to increase it. They are good stewards of what the good Lord has given them. They do everything to be good representatives of Rutherford County business community and, yes, even in their neighborhood. Starting a new business has been a learning process for them, and it's not been without their share of mistakes. They're young. This is new to them. However, they're committed to moving forward accordingly. It has also come with learning that this will continue to be a sacrifice for them, and they're willing to make that sacrifice. They've proven it. So, in conclusion, I can tell you how I feel. You've heard how everybody else feels. Feelings don't matter. What matters is that this weighty decision should not be based on feelings, but rather the board base their decision on applicable standards of review within the land use code. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Robert P. County Commissioner, District 4. I live over on Bivens Hill Road in Rudeville. Uh, first thing I want to say is I've met Brandon and Danielle and their beautiful daughter several times, and they're wonderful people. They're hardworking, they're dedicated. You know, they do what they uh, need to do, in my opinion, to be successful. Uh, but I, I've got some problems with this particular venue, and, I, and I'll say why. Before I do that, I, I want to say you couldn't ask for a better advocate than your mom. She did a beautiful job. My wife's also a, been a teacher for about 40 years, so we know how important teaching is in this community. But the things, a few things that I want to point out is, you know, she mentioned a dream. Well, these people that are surrounding this venue also have a dream, and their dream is to have peaceful evenings. The problem that I've got, again, and I've stated it earlier, your rights end where mine begin. Is it right for these people that live around them for almost every weekend out of the year, and probably even half of them, let's just say 25 of those weekends out of the year, they can't utilize their home, their property, sit out, enjoy themselves, play music that they might want to hear because they might be disturbing a wedding venue going on. Now, one thing I want to point out is no one here has came up here and said they want to stop them from continuing the business that they have now. There's nobody advocating doing that, and I'm not advocating doing that. But I want to point out something to you. You were talking about the noises and uh, the decibel readings here and there. Well, I did a little study myself, and I asked the people that live in the houses that surrounded this venue, 
And guess what they told me? They said, they have heard the noise from the venue on several occasions inside their home with the doors closed, the windows up. So saying that it's not intrusive to these people that are surrounding them right there is not true. Now you can do all the decibel readings, you can talk about elevations all you want to, but if you go talk to the people that are directly affected, that's who concerns me. And like I said, I think Danielle, I think the world of you, and I can't believe it. What are you feeding that girl? She has grown a foot since I've seen her last, I tell you. But she's absolutely beautiful. It, and my heart bleeds here. I want you to succeed in what you're doing. I want to try to help you. You know, I don't know that there's ever something you can come to an agreement on with the guys that live right around you. I think that what you're doing with your photography business and having your friends over, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I encourage everybody that's watching this or sitting here, if you hadn't seen this place, it's absolutely beautiful. But the reason it is, is because these people work their tails off making it look nice. Uh, their neighbors over there, you know, they have some disagreements, just like our, every neighbors do, but they don't dislike these people. You know, they'd like for them to succeed also. And, you know, they're, they're caring people, but they also have concerns for themselves. And I think that, again, their rights ends where theirs begin. And that's something you got to be concerned with. You know, you need to realize that what they're doing is impacting these people around them and adversely. So that's, that's the problem I've got. Uh, you know, I think most of the things could have been worked around. You know, traffic, I don't know who said it wasn't dangerous crossing Compton Road in 96, but you're wrong. Uh, you know, I've driven it way too many times and got by by the skin of my teeth a time or two and seen too many wrecks there. And you can call the Sheriff's Department and get an update on that because there's a lot of accidents on that corner. That's why there's a red light there. Unfortunately, we can't get a turn light, and I'll tell you why. Because there's a culvert under there, we can't expand the road to another lane. That's why we hadn't got a turn light there, in case many of you wonder about that. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, there was one lady, and I really appreciate you coming up and talking. I think she said she lived in Two Hills. But that was the only person that came up that spoke that actually lives right there by that venue. The others that spoke for this venue, even the guy that lives over on Valley View, are away from there, away from that venue. But I wanted to point that out. The people that are against this are right there in that neighborhood, either surrounding the facility or right over the hill from it or right up the street from it. Uh, thank you. All right. I will ask you to deny this. Thank you, sir. Next. Michael Mancuso. Just do it right there. Michael Mancuso. I live at 124 Rockingham Drive in Murfreesboro. Been there for about 10 years. Been in this county for over 25 years. I want to talk a minute about some of the concerns we heard tonight about traffic. I have those same concerns. Most of you people that have lived in this county and watched it grow understand what it takes to get across Murfreesboro. It's a lot of traffic. My understanding um, for the proposal is that the events will be held on the weekends, not during traffic peak times. We heard some people mention about MTSU runners and other folks that utilize Saddle Drive. I've been down that road several times. I've not seen anyone at 10 o'clock at night running down that road. What we're talking about is the events are going to be held on the weekends. We're talking about traffic, and I'll be, I'll be brief. The traffic that we're talking about and the concerns of traffic may be an hour before the event is held, maybe 45 minutes at the end of the event. My understanding is that the applicants 
are considering and are committed to possibly using off-duty police to help alleviate some of that traffic for the ingress as well as the egress, whether it be on Compton Road or Saddle Drive. Um, I've heard a lot tonight about feelings, strong feelings for the project as well as against it. At the end of the day, you guys vote. We are a county, a state, and a country based on laws, ordinances, and restrictions. Some of the things that were brought up tonight will be handled and be addressed as this process moves forward in the site plan meetings once the zoning is approved. One last thing, at the beginning of this hearing, the people in opposition were asked to stand. I'd like to ask the people that are in favor to stand real quick, real quick. Those of you up in the balcony, please take a look. We've got quite a few people that are in favor of it. I thank you for your time and I am in favor of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Jim Akers. I live at 1906 Battleground Drive in Murfreesboro. I'm a bit biased in this matter. Danielle is my daughter. Brandon is my son-in-law. Melania is my granddaughter. I was reluctant to speak until Commissioner P said one thing that, that struck me. Uh, he realizes, as we all do, that this is a young business, that it has good points and bad points. And we've, we've as a group, pointed all those out tonight very sufficiently, in my opinion. I would only say this. I think there's maybe some spirit of cooperation here between both sides. I hope that is the case. It's the way it should be. And in the end, uh, I, I would hope that we all end up when we leave here knowing that we're all a part of this Rutherford County community. We're all neighbors, whether we agree on things or not. If there's some middle ground here that could be reached, I can assure you that my daughter and her husband would be willing to make some concessions and try to make this work. Maybe we could work toward that end rather than one of the two opposites of either make it work or make it not work. Maybe there's some middle ground. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, members. Next. Which one is going to speak? <laughs> He's probably going to try and interrupt me. <laughs> Hello, I am Ashley McAlexander. I live at 1629 Saddle Drive with my husband and our three kids that are all five and under, part of the sweet, tight-knit community in our neighborhood, who have the noisy kids, naked running through the yard in the hose, and scootering up and down the street, which has no shoulder at all. So if a car is coming, which happens a lot, because some people do use it as a cut through, not even mentioning like wedding traffic, I have to shove my kids off into the ditch to keep them safe. And it's about a foot and a half to two foot drop off. So I'm more so concerned about the safety of the little kids. I have a two year old, he's clumsy, he's on a scooter, he can't slow down. With the hill, people fly around the corner, they're not paying attention. Yes, traffic will probably be at its peak 
I heard some people say, oh, people all leave at the same time. Some people said, no, that's not the case. They'll leave throughout the whole event. Either way, if you factor in the amount of vehicles that will be added onto the street, possibly going down our street, I mean, that's an increase. And while I love business and small business and flourishing businesses, this is our neighborhood. This is where my babies are going to grow up. We bought this house as our forever home. We're not trying to grow our family into a 3,000 square foot house or whatever. Like, We live in a 1,600 square foot house built in the 1980s that we love more than anything and keeping our kids safe while our house is set back. It just is a safety concern. I mean, there's no sidewalks, there's no shoulders. What are we supposed to do when we are scootering to our friend's house down the street and it's five o'clock right before the wedding starts, people are late and they are speeding down, taking a cut through onto saddle to avoid the Compton traffic. I mean, it's inevitable. I've been late to weddings. I would do that. Um, not thinking about the people living in the neighborhood. So, sorry, I get nervous speaking in front of people and I wasn't gonna speak, <laughs> but I just feel like, I mean, being somebody that lives on that street that has seen my kids almost get hit by cars, not even involved in a wedding, you know? It takes one bad, scary moment and I mean, if there's 52 weddings and that's only one out of the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every weekend in a year, I mean, that's how many cars, how many days of the week, how many weekends through the year it adds up. And that's not including, that's one year. What about years as it grows? Which is what everyone's talking about, this business growing. It's like, this is our home. I love flourishing businesses, but it's like, if people inevitably pull onto Saddle Drive where there's no shoulder, no safety for our babies, what am I supposed to do? And don't say I'm a bad mom for scootering with my kids down the street, enjoying the fresh air outside. I mean, it's just a safety concern. So thank you for listening. And he actually cooperated, so, and it's really late for him. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to both of you. Anyone else? Hi, I am Kelly Fiore, and I live at 4416 Vinson Road. Um, I did not come here to speak tonight, but I think I have to. Um, my parents live in front of this proposed venue at 2016 East Compton Road. Um, I grew up in the home of one of the, wo the women who spoke before at 862 Compton Road, um, and I love her and her family. Um, I would like to say that I grew up as part of the Compton community, and I share a lot of common friends with Brandon and Danielle, and I respect, as a small business owner, what they're trying to do. And I believe, as Rutherford County citizens, we very much want to see our community grow and flourish in the proper way. However, businesses belong in certain places, surrounded by neighbors who love each other, who spend their time in their yards, who have a great community, is not where that needs to be. Um, my daughter, who is 14, who would really like to speak tonight, but I'm not gonna let her, reminded me of a night that she was spending the night at my parents' house, and it was almost 11 o'clock, and the noise did disturb her. And I know that that won't happen every week. I realize that, and I do want to see young people in our community succeed. I am a small business owner. However, I choose to operate my small business in town rather than at 4416 Vincent. Road because I live in a rural community where people have an expectation of having a certain type of property that they have purchased. Many of these people have been there for 40 years. 40 years that has been their home. 40 years they have raised their family. For 21 years, my parents have lived at 2016 East Compton Road, and I loved that so much 
that I moved two miles away where I will be affected by the traffic that chooses to go to Halls Hill Pike. So I implore you to stop and think about, do you want your grandchildren woken up by a wedding venue? Do you want your children on streets where in a quiet neighborhood, someone under the influence of alcohol could take their life? Please stop and consider that with growth, we do have to remember where we came from and that we want to maintain our properties and our property values the way we expected to have them when we purchased them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I'm closing the public hearing. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make one particular comment. The first gentleman that was up here spoke for a large group of neighbors. Right. And this planning commissioner and county commissioner appreciates the fact that we didn't have to listen to 30 people get up here and say the same thing. So it was effective in my mind that he represented a large group of neighbors and actually uh, speeded the process up. And those folks standing up were neighbors, people that I have spent a little bit of time with getting to know and getting to know that neighborhood a little bit. But I appreciate the fact that he addressed for a group of neighbors and saved this commission a lot of time. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We're, we're now with the commission. Commissioners? I need your comments or motion. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Am I recognized? You're recognized. Thank you. Tanya, this question goes to you and codes. Um, I'm still a little blurry on if this applicant is up to speed currently with the proper licensure and approvals to operate a wedding venue. Whether, whether it's, quote, personal or business, because they're advertising it on the website as a business with prices included. So tell me if they are currently okay to be operating a wedding venue. They are not currently approved. That is why we're here at the Planning Commission this evening. Okay. So, I mean, that just brings a whole skew of he said, she said, public, oh yeah, we're having all these parties and events, but they're private. Well, and then yet the website says 501, wow, we've hit a huge benchmark. Well, something stinks. And for them to continue not to abide by the regulations really gets up my spine all the way to the brain stem. And to continue not to abide by the regulations, why would I want to reward that? So these people do not have their house in order. And to me, they have no respect for the regulations that everybody in this county are supposed to follow. So Mr. Chair, I am going to resoundly deny, request to deny this application. I have a motion to deny. We have a second, Commissioner Bogle. It's open for discussion. Commissioner Gooch. I think, Commissioner, that when they felt like that they were not in compliance, they took it off the website. And if you know, and if you, if you know the people, to say they disregard of the law, I think is slander. Uh, Chairman Gooch, the event says the events with the prices say 2024. That's this year. Okay, but when was that posted and when was it taken down? The you, fact that it was posted at all without having the licensure to do so? Is I think when they realized... You have the floor. I think that when they realized that they was not compliant 
and they was doing the wrong thing is having it uh, advertised that is then when they took it down. Um, anyway, we can get a copy of the police report where the sheriff raided the property. I, I personally don't have it, but I mean, could we get a copy of it? I'm sure we could. Okay. Sir, sir, this is totally with commission. I would like to make a couple comments here, just uh, real quick as we have this discussion. When you look in our ordinance for retreats, of course it talks about the number of events that you're allowed to have, well, the, depending on which direction you go as far as approval processes and whatnot. We actually have a definition for what an event is. It's an event that's defined as a celebration, ceremony, wedding reception, or wedding slash comma reception, corporate function, or similar activity for the benefit of someone other than the property owner that takes place on a periodic basis involving the gathering of individuals assembled for the common purpose of said celebration, wedding, etc. Now it goes further. It says this definition does not include uses that are accessory to a single family residential use such as a private party gathering similar activities. Okay. What it doesn't say, and I heard several people talk about this when they came up to the podium and I wanted to make sure everybody was clear on this. It doesn't say anywhere in these regulations as to whether or not these are provided for payment or they're provided as a free of charge service. It, it doesn't really matter to me if somebody approve, if somebody gets approval for a retreat if they're charging people or not. That, that to me makes no difference. It's the events themselves is what we're looking at, not so much whether or not someone has paid for them or whether or not they, you know, whether or not someone has paid for them. So I just wanted to make that point clear. Now, regarding the website and everything, when it first started, yes, they were up. Was it amended to be taken down? Yes, it was. We also know that there were events out there that some, they say were private. There were a lot of private events, but there were a couple I know that, and Tanya, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were a couple that we spoke with the applicants about that were previously booked. Now this may have been while the website was up after it was taken down. So I'm just making sure that that's out there so everybody understands that. So with that, I just, one other thing actually. Um, I think as part of any motion that is made, whether it be up or down, I think we need to be careful about how we're looking at past performance. Uh, I don't think a denial in and of it, that can be a reason in and of itself for denying an application. I think there need to be other reasons involved in that, as that consideration as far as the appropriateness in the area, traffic concerns, drainage concerns, a whole slew of things. Just the fact that, well, they didn't get approval to do it in the first place. We don't think they're going to continue doing it in the future. I don't know if that's valid grounds for any kind of a motion, especially a denial. So I just wanted to make that point. Okay, my next question. Did the applicant originally ask for a cap of 50 people? The original, when we looked at the pattern book that was originally submitted, it was right about that. Yes. Okay, and do you know why, if he's requesting a cap of 50, why now it's 97? They wanted to be able to maximize the use of the space that they could without having to put sprinklers in it, which would, again, would you would hit the 100 person. So if it was 50, they would have to make more improvements to the property. Well, they just wouldn't have as big of a area for the assembly area. But I think in their mind, if we can have up to 97, 100, whatever that number is, and not have to do sprinklers, they wanted to maximize that number. Would it seem like on the, um, on what they've had that was listed, said a wedding party of 30, um, one of less than 50, it seems to me that their original intent was to have small micro events, but because of the regulations, they had to go in and go ahead and say, okay, 97. Well, I think that was a choice they made. If they wanted to reduce the number and keep it under 50 or whatever that number is, you know, pick a number, I think they could do that. That's up to them. They're not doing it because they have to have 97. They did it as a choice because if it's 50 or 97 in their mind, as I understand it, they weren't going to be required to have sprinklers one way or the other. So they figured why not go with a higher number. 
What is it because if it's 50 that the the space, the open space would have to be smaller and they would have to build more rooms in the facility to make the open space smaller? I believe so, but Tanya, do you yes, want to Yes, do you mind in? if I chime in? So in order to uh, calculate uh, an occupant load for a building, we have to uh, review the building and calculate the occupant load based on the size of the building. So if he has a building that's 2,400 square feet, but he said, I only want 50 people there, we have to, myself and um, Josh, have to calculate it. We have to review this building and calculate the occup occupant load based on the capacity of the building, based on its potential. Just because they just want 50, it doesn't, we can't do it like that. There's nobody to enforce that. We can't be at their wedding venues. If they can, by the code, fit 150 people in here, but they say they only want 50, we're not going to be at their weddings to verify or enforce that 50 max occupant load. We have to, to calculate the occupant load based on the size of the building. So if they wanted 50, yes, you're correct. They would have to reduce the assembly area inside that building and therefore build out the rest of the building for another use that would then be added to the use of the assembly area, if that makes any sense. It, it does, and I think that that's why they, they originally wanted to cap it, and then well, now they have, would have to build more rooms in the facility, and so it was just more economical to go with up to 97. Okay, so when we had a conversation with them in August of 2022, I believe all of this was discussed before they built a 2,400 square foot building. We discussed the occupant load calculations, et cetera, at that time. Was the building um, originally built as an accessory to the home, or was it built knowing that it was going to ask for a business? It was built knowing that they were going to ask for a business. Other discussion? If not, Madam do, Secretary. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I, I do have a question here. I think I might be a little bit confused. What are they allowed to do, right? If we take no action, up or down? What are they allowed to do right now? In the morning, what can they do at this site? They are currently approved for a home-based business for photography sessions on their property. The building was permitted as a residential accessory structure, so it can be used to store residential storage, household vehicles, any household uh, or residential uh, or furniture or anything that they've got. Is, and, there, is but, there a limit on the photography work as far as number of people at one time on yes. the side of the hill? And I can, I'll, I'll address that. We have two levels of home-based business. We have a minor and a major, okay? They have a minor home-based business. A minor home-based business is something that can be approved administratively, and that's how we handle that particular business when they've submitted it. Now, there are a number of standards when it comes to home-based businesses, the, the minors, okay? And when it comes to the number of people who are on the property at any one time or how many visits you get per day, it says minor home-based businesses shall not create more than five customers slash client visits in any one day and no more than two customers or clients can be present at any one time. That's what's allowed under a minor home-based business. And the Mancusos have signed this form and have said that you know we're going to abide by that so that's what they'd be limited to currently okay that brings in i'm gonna go back a little bit on what mike just said a minute ago um, if it's home-based business max of five when i was out there there's a porta johns out there so it tells me if it's home-based business and I got five people you welcome to use my bathroom. So it's got to be something going on, in my opinion. More than five. I don't live out there. I don't police that. But let's say in the morning, what's the steps in the morning? For 25 cars out there doing photography work. I mean, what's what's the out for the neighbors out there? Because what I'm hearing is kind of pretty solid with folks that live around there. 44 year old. I mean, not year old. 44 year residents. 40 year residents. 
what do they do in the morning? We, if if this is denied tonight, they've been they've been allowed to operate. I, I don't know. That's the reason I'm confused about what they actually have today. Right. Well, and to answer your question, and Tanya, feel free to, to chime in at any time if I'm saying something that's that's incorrect. But if we were to get a phone call tomorrow, let's just say, I mean, regardless of what happens tonight. Just because of the fact that this is, as you know, is a recommending body for rezonings. You know, this would still have to go through the full board of commissioners. So regardless of what happens tonight, there's another step. But let's say in the morning we get a phone call that they had 30 people out there. I mean, I, I, well, I'm just throwing a number out there. You know, it's prom season. Hey, we had 30 people out here. I don't know. I'm just, again, throwing a number out there. We would contact the applicants, uh, you know, the Mancusos, and say, look, your minor home-based business says you cannot create more than five customer client visits in any one day and no more than two customer clients can be present at any one time based on the form that you signed and said you were going to abide by these uh, standards. What's going on? You know, help us out. And if they said, well, yeah, we had more than that, I'm like, okay. So at that point, they have a couple options. A, they can start booking photo sessions consistent with these regulations, or if they feel they cannot do that, they would have to apply for a major home-based business. Again, that's, this is taking the venue part of it out, okay? So the major home-based business would have to go through the Board of Zoning Appeals, have a public hearing similar to this, and they have more flexibility as far as the number of people who could be there, whatnot, uh, client visits, whatnot. So those would be their two options. Now, in the meantime, it, you know, if they don't make an application and we still get phone calls that these things are happening and these are documented that yes, there was an event, something happened and there was more people there than should have been, at some point that's when zoning enforcement gets involved. Ultimately, I mean, you know, that's always a last resort. Could it go to court? Yeah, it could. But again, Tony, if you want to go into any more specifics with, with that part of it, I'll, I'll gladly defer to you. So I think in your uh, packages, there was a couple of letters, legal letters that we had sent out that were included. So um, we started getting complaints of um, the photography sessions from beginning of last year. Um, they got their minor, based, uh, minor home based business approval in January of last year. So everything they did was legal as far as the photography sessions were concerned. They were, they were authorized to do those. They were permitted to do those. Uh, in July, we started getting um, complaints of weddings, and uh, I received photos and video and um, complaints from neighbors. And I sent uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mancuso a letter. I actually gave them a call, too, and um, those letters are in your package. Um, they had assured me at that time that they were going to go through the approval process. They were going to make application to the Planning Commission. Now, typically, if somebody comes to myself and Doug and Josh and we have a meeting and we know that they're going to establish some sort of business, if we were to get complaints um, that that business had, uh, let's say they were starting to advertise it or something, as long as an active uh, Planning Commission application is well underway, we work with them. You know, we tell them, okay, you're not supposed to be doing this, um, but as long as there's an active application, we'll work with you. So we uh, spoke with them first in July, and by October, I believe the second letter went out. Uh, we were still receiving complaints of weddings in October and that second letter went out. Um, at this point, we have exhausted all the notifications of um, the activity that has not been approved at this point. If there was further activity, further illegal activity that was not approved, um, I think we're ready for uh, further legal action at this point. It is a class C misdemeanor to violate the Rutherford County Zoning Ordinance. And that's what they would be doing. Thanks, Chair. And that was in 2022, correct? That was in 2023. 20, okay. Yes. I'd like to add to that, you know, the, um, I think it's an, appropriate, an inappropriate place, not because of traffic, because traffic is everywhere, but the conditions of the road, uh, both roads, Saddle Drive and East Compton. Um, currently it's hard to handle the current traffic. Um, you know, this, uh, on our, in our notebooks, it says staff is not convinced this is an appropriate 
a location. Uh, the county commissioner in that area has also uh, spoken that he feels like it's not an appropriate location for the wedding venue. You know, we do support small businesses and we are, are not affect, affecting their current photography business, but to have a continued wedding venue, I, I feel it's just not the right area for many reasons. Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I would like to withdraw my original motion and, and uh, revise that. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll withdraw my second. I'll second. All right. Thank you, Lee. Uh, D Doug is exactly right. Uh, regardless of the fact that um, there are code violation issues and and um, I'll say irresponsibility, uh, that does not really uh, should should come into play here on our. Uh, motion in terms of voting on this recommendation up or down but and Charlotte just mentioned and we have heard the testimony about traffic we've heard the testimony about noise and Commissioner P talked about him uh, face to face talking with neighbors and hearing noise within the homes in the evenings um, no doubt that it's a beautiful place. No doubt that it would make a great place for a wedding venue, but I don't believe it is the right place in this particular neighborhood, surrounded by neighborhood. So for those reasons, traffic, lighting, noise, I'm gonna make a motion to deny. I have a motion to deny. Do I have that second? Second, Commissioner Averwater. Is there further discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Jim Averwater? Yes. Jeff Phillips? Yes. Mike Cush? Yes. Vogel? Yes. Charlotte P? Yes. Trey Gooch? Abstain. David Jones? Yes. Chip Pinion? Yes. Jim Thompson? Yes. Pettis Reed? Yes. Motion carries. It is denied. Just a reminder, all rezoning, zoning ordinances amended requested will be considered at the May 16, 2024 Board of Commissioners meeting unless deferred or, rejoin, or withdrawn by the Planning Commission or the applicant. Mr. Mossy, staff, staff reports and other business. I have nothing, sir. With that, we are adjourned.